Did anyone order a cleric with a sight of sass? If so, I am Dahlia Avalon. Wow, <laughs> how do I keep this short and sweet? I grew up in the poor sector of New Averin and took care of Papa after my mother died when I was six. Papa was not well after she passed, so I bounced around waitressing and spent any of my free time at the Temple of Kokobiel since he helped me feel close to my mama. But it was hard making ends meet as a barmaid, so after some encouragement from my best friend Silic, I enlisted as a cleric in the Order of the Fallen Star. Next thing I know, I'm across the realm with a team of strangers that have quickly become my family. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Ready for things to take a sharp left? Okay, let's see. Turns out Kokovio, the goddess of moon and stars, is not the most virtuous angel that we thought, and well, neither is New Averin. After defecting from the church and the government, I learned that Gladlin, the god of fate, is only a slightly less destructive hot mess. And now we're on god number three, Halasna, goddess of sun and life. As for I, now travels the world as adventures for hire. So far, so good there. I would totally hate if something bad were to happen to her. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, there's more. How could I forget? Turns out my mother descends from a long line of devil royalty, and not just any royalty, the Deimos clan, aka the Lord of the Shadowfell. My lineage gives me this devil form I can transform into, a natural foresight gift, or curse if you ask me, and a boatload full of family drama. I discovered I have a half-brother named Silic. Yeah, that's Silic. My mother at some point has been resurrected from the dead, and oh yeah, Deimos wants to use me as a conduit for his armies to infiltrate and conquer the Aberrant Realm. Almost forgot to mention that part, it uh, kinda haunts my dreams a lot. But it's not all doom and gloom in my world, promise. <laughs> no, no really, I have wonderful friends, hilarious and fun adventures, and I may have just met the love of my life at the midst of it all. Ejodakash is the only person I've ever met to stand right in the face of danger and swing his sword without a second thought. With as much fire and brimstone looming over our heads, I couldn't imagine living in the world without him and our friends by my side, and keeping me sane. So whatever new Avarant, the gods, Deimos, or fate seem to have planned for all of us, I know that her eye will be ready to face it together. Because if we go down, we won't go down without the fight. You got this, right? <laughs> right? Every group has its dark and mysterious member, and to Horiath, that would be me. I am Gajodokash Stromach, son of Zamir and Nelian. I grew up in a small village within the elven kingdom of Nelithir, known as Irobata. When my father left my mother, sister, and I when I was 15, and never returned, I aided my mother in running her apothecary. Three years later, I would join my sister, Medicana, in serving the royal guard, becoming a personal bodyguard for Prince Juvenile Galakia. Just two years into my service, though, rumors of our forbidden romance would reach the king, and the following morning, after a fight with his son, the king was found dead in his room. Blame was placed on me, and with my mother's plea, I escaped the main kingdom. I spent the next six months running from guards before finally catching a ship off the continent. The pirate captain of the Phantom Chevron Joff Potra took me under his wing for the next four and a half years. Well, until a failed raid by the crew left me behind in the kingdom of Abrus, and I was captured by guards. Desperate to save my own life, I offered any information I had on the kingdom of Analithir, eventually capturing the attention of the Council of Nine. The tiefling Severus Tor had me released, and spent the following two years training me to be his personal spy. The next year, they shipped me off to join the Order of the Fallen Star, the Army of New Avent. Here I would go by Gaiju Redfo, and meet my team, now known as Ariath. It was only mere days into us being a group that we were sent out on various missions to destroy plagued villages, fight awoken gods and caves, and meet our now former commander, Silla Glossron, and teammates Apollo and Ren. I would become a warlock of Lozno during this time. An attack on our base gave us a promotion into the Freelancer program, and gave us a ship, which we now call the Homeward Bound. I am the captain. We were sent to Sogaria, the Nalkadai. New Everett betrayed us there, and we fled to the Order of the Soaring Flame. There, Commander of the Earthdrill asked us to clear away to an Elthorian base on Alkadai. However, in our month and a half mission to do so, we came across one of the sons of Bahamut, Anima. After kidnapping Zephinia, he sent her, Dira, Ren, and companion Treya ten years into the future. Apollo, now Hades, 
Dahlia and I spent ten years surviving so we could return to save our friends in Elkadai. Though we've recently lost Ram to their own missions, rescued Dira's parents, fought Dahlia's devilish grandfather, and I proposed to my love, Dahlia. It's time for me to return to Nelithia and set things right. Only time will tell if I'm successful. As the story of Arachnikai once said, who, who am I? You sure you want to know? The, the story of my life is not for the faint of heart. It, if somebody told you it was a happy tale, if, if somebody said I was just your average guy, not a care in the world, somebody lied. My name is Apollo, abandoned by my mother at the Silverleaf Institute. As a baby, I grew up never knowing her or, or my father. I grew up living and, and learning all that I could from the school. Everyone was great. Well, not everyone. Well, really, only a few people were nice. The Institute housed the, the wealthiest of children, mostly. The ones that could afford prodigious education, at least. Because I was an orphan that the school took in, I was seen as an outcast. And even worse, due to my abnormal tiefling appearance with wings and tail, I was seen as a, well, a freak. I, I spent most of my days with my head down and my nose in a good book. Books are wonderful. They show you amazing worlds and lead you on amazing adventures. Oh, just like my one favorite story, Shriek, where he goes on an adventure with his reluctant friend Mule and, and Shortbread Guy. <laughs> Sorry, I get a bit carried away. Things went well until one day a lad in my studies picked a fight with me. It was then that I discovered I had magical aptitude and at the same moment lost control of it. A fireball erupted from me and exploded in an area around me. Due to my tiefling heritage, I was only slightly hurt, but the boy who started it all wasn't so lucky. The boy's family wanted me expelled from the Institute, but Professor Dernick fought to have me stay. The tribunal agreed to allow it, but he was to watch over me and make sure I never used my magic again. He agreed to do so, but in secret trained me to control my powers. It was mildly successful, but I still lose control from time to time. Years passed, and one day I overheard the tale of a woman who was kidnapped and taken to a cave. I felt this was my time to finally become uh, the hero I was I, I always read about. Little did I know I, I would get lost in said cave. But I, I, I would meet my found family. We've had so many adventures since, and, and things have been great. Well, that is until half of them disappeared. I pulled through time, and I was unable to stop the magic, and it broke me. And that's when I came to take the lead. Nice to meet you, finally. I'm Hades, Apollo's other half. See, Apollo is very innocent and has a hard time dealing with extreme stress. There are a few majorly stressful moments in his life I've taken over to get him through those situations. I first came to be during the whole business with the bully and the fireball. At least that was the earliest memory. I live deep in his consciousness, seeing and hearing all until I'm needed. His friends being split and sent into the future ten years was just the needed push for me to take the reins again. The only problem is, for the next 10 years, I stayed in control and couldn't talk to him. So for the last 10 years, I've been running around having a grand adventure with Dahlia and Gaiju, who have become like siblings to me. Stories we could tell, I could write a book. Anyways, I eventually reconnected with our friends and have been traveling since. Oh, and Apollo has started talking again, taking control for short periods of time. Perhaps he'll take back over soon, and I'll go back to the dark corner of his brain that I usually stay. Which is good, right? I'm Dara Mullane from Currents Gap. My family's been the town blacksmith's time out of mind. That's what I learned, and what I thought I'd always do. My little brother Aiden, though, he was different. Don't even know where he got half the books he read, and nobody ever really understood what he was on about. Some folks got more patience for that than others, and some don't have nothing better to do but make trouble. Clint Nantery was one of those. His daddy owned the mine. He figured that meant he owned the rest of us, too. One night, Fenton had been wasting time and his daddy's money in the tavern. He took some kind of personal offense from Aiden just being Aiden. My brother was on the ground when I got there, and, well, it was kind of a blur after that till they dragged me off. I'm told Fenton ain't never been the same since. With what passed for justice in the mountains back then, that was more than enough to get me clapped in irons and shipped off to some other mine. It was 12 years before the new aberrant soldiers came and told us the mine bosses weren't going to be a problem anymore. Whatever we were in for, 
He would be forgiven, and we'd be free right then and there if we joined up. It seemed like an easy choice to be part of the folks aiming to bring peace and justice. And for a while, it made sense. I even heard my brother got to go off to some fancy school to learn magic. I swore my oath to cook Hobiel, angel of the moon and stars. Only it turns out she ain't what she's supposed to be, and neither is New Averin. It's all complicated. And my team, all right, well, they're mostly all smarter than me, but even I could tell when there wasn't no choice but to leave. So we did, and here we are. What happens next? Well, that's anybody's guess. I never put much stock in families. My own sold me off to the black market to make money off the child with wings. I was nothing but a skinny street kid with broken wings from trying to escape. That is, until the Order of the Fallen Star Soldiers rescued me. My heroes in blue. I aspired to be like them and one day meet the big three. Soma, Geneva, and Aegis. My life turned around and I worked hard night and day to hone my skills and be the best soldier I could. I usually worked on my own until I was paired up with the most peculiar group of people. We were sent on some quests, our base was attacked, and I died. But don't worry, Dahlia brought me back. I think I could actually consider her my first true friend. Gaiju and Dira also quickly wormed their way into my guarded heart as our adventures continued. My world turned a little upside down at that point as we encountered creatures and were hounded by the gods. I'm starting to think my little group is a god magnet, and I'm not quite sure how I feel about that. Mm. Anyways, one of these gods, Luna, decided that I would be a good stand-in for her and transferred her powers over to me. Mm. I met her sisters, which seem like major bitches, and I keep getting asked if I would choose peace or war, and quite frankly, I'm tired of it. And I would rather continue being the best soldier I can, which turned out to be not that great. <laughs> My friend may have accidentally transformed into a slightly terrifying demon, which forced us to defect. But one of the big three, Soma, also defected, and it turns out so did his brother. So maybe my past heroes were not all they cracked up to be. I wish I could say things went well from there, but somehow myself, Dira, and Treya were transported ten years in the future while Gaiju, Dahlia, and our new friend Apollo were left behind. For us, no time had passed, but the rest of Hariath was stuck living in the past ten years searching for us. We finally found each other just as Geneva, another of the big three, found us and was not very friendly. A few murders later and we were free of her wrath. Soma found us again, and I'm glad he did. He's not as bad as Dahlia makes him seem. In fact, I think he's pretty sweet and not too bad looking. <sighs> oh, and he gave me a gorgeous locket before leaving again. I guess I'm able to talk to him through it, which is nice. Anyways, Horiath ventured to the Shadowfell to save Apollo, who's now Hades, from Dahlia and Silic's evil grandfather. I was again hounded with that peace or war question. Obviously, peace is not an answer in our line of work as trouble keeps finding us. I think war might be our only option to protect my team, who has taught me what a family should be. Honestly, I can't even imagine my life without them. I've gone through a few changes recently. I couldn't tell at first, but the team seemed pretty concerned. I don't know why, since it's just a little hair and makeup change. Well, maybe my eyes changed a bit as well, but it's not that mo noticeable. At least Soma seems to like it. Did anyone order a cleric with a sight of sass? If so, I'm Dahlia Ablon. Wow, <laughs> how do I keep this short and sweet? I grew up in the poorest sector of New Averant and took care of Papa after my mother died when I was six. Papa was not well after she passed, so I bounced around waitressing and spent any of my free time at the Temple of Kokobio since he helped me feel close to my mama. But it was hard making ends meet as a barmaid, so after some encouragement from my best friend Silic, I enlisted as a cleric in the Order of the Fallen Star. Next thing I know, I'm across the realm with a team of strangers that have quickly become my family. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Ready for things to take a sharp left? Okay, let's see. Turns out Kokovio, the goddess of moon and stars, is not the most virtuous angel that we thought, and well, neither is New Averin. After defecting from the church and the government, I learned that Gladlin, the god of fate, is only a slightly less destructive hot mess. And now we're on god number three, Halasna, goddess of sun and life, as her eye now travels the world as adventures for hire. So far, so good there. I would totally hate if something bad were to happen to her. Oh, oh wait, there's more. How could I forget? Turns out my mother descends from a long line of devil royalty, and not just any royalty, the Deimos clan, aka the Lord of the Shadowfell. 
My lineage gives me this devil form I can transform into, a natural foresight gift, or curse if you ask me, and a boatload full of family drama. I discovered I have a half-brother named Silic. Yeah, that's Silic. My mother at some point has been resurrected from the dead, and oh yeah, Deimos wants to use me as a conduit for his armies to infiltrate and conquer the Aferent Realm. Almost forgot to mention that part, it uh, kinda haunts my dreams a lot. But it's not all doom and gloom in my world, promise. <laughs> No. Oh no, it's not working. Oh, there we go. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to another playbook. Hopefully, everything's sounding correct. Uh, um, hopefully, uh, if you have any audio issues, they are taken care of. Did as many fixes as we can, so everything should sound great this week. Um, before we begin, we will do Xander's little intro. Hello everyone, this is Xander the Magnificent from the Nerdy Playbook Campaign 3 Echoes of Bahamut. Thank you for turning in to the Nerdy Playbook. We are a group of cosplayers who decide to start streaming our D&D campaign sessions. If you love drama, action, and comedy, this is the perfect D&D session for you. Today I'm here to tell you about the Nerdy Playbook's fundraising efforts for April. We are raising funds for a local community service project based in Rock County, located in Wisconsin, called Shaping Young Minds, Building Early Learning Communities. This includes the introduction of pop-up play centers at community establishments, installing communication prompts at local grocery stores and coffee shops, and aiding in the launch of these developmental tools. Pop-up play centers offers the opportunity for caregivers and youth to build uh, communication and play skills with each other. This is through toys, activities, and additional resources will be provided and will consist of five different activity stations for families to play and engage while encouraging early brain development through sensory activities, critical thinking games, communication prompts, collaboration, and active play. 85% of a child's brain development occurs during the first three years of life, so please join us in supporting kindergarten readiness throughout Rock County. Thank you for all your generosity supporting this community service project. You can follow the, sh the Shaping Young Minds, Building Early Learn Communities, and the links below and all around for ways to support this effort. We appreciate all your support of the Nerdy Playbook and our channel, and we'll see you in the game. Thank you so much, and have a great day. All right. Uh, <laughs> we are uh back um also uh just so you know for any of you that are in the chicago area or go to c22 uh all of us will be actually at c22 uh in two weekends uh so uh check us out there we'll be there for the full three days friday Saturday, and sunday uh if you're actually able to find us on friday we'll be actually cosplaying as our own characters saturday some critical role plus some of us doing some other things um and you can find some Star Wars characters there as well, some Mando armor and whatnot. Um, any other announcements from anyone? Okay. Let's... Um, I guess maybe just reminder for off week. Yes. Uh, oh, God, I don't have the schedule in front of me. Next week <laughs> is off for next week we're off the next week you guys are off following week off. yeah Fe thank you yeah. i did not so have the sheet in front echoes of me. will be next week yeah just echoes will be next week and then the following week will be star wars and blades right i don't have this in front of me okay <laughs> uh all right with that let's go in the intro
<laughs> All right, we are back. So, last we left off, the team themselves, uh, some of you partook in the actual King's Tourney, um, with uh, Gaju making all the way to the end to actually fight off against the Captain of the Guard. Finding out that the captain was quite resilient, eventually a ability was used to allow Gaju to just take it without any problems. Uh, eventually, the captain decided to. What, what's with the look? No, you guy. <laughs> uh, the uh, <laughs> um. Eventually, with the process, the king wanted the captain to be executed, but with the crowd cheering for life instead of death, no execution was had. During the commotion, the last thing she mentions to Gaju, due to the betrayal, is if you're up for it, we could work together to kill him as she walks off into the smoke. That's pretty much where we left off. So at this point, King, Queen, a lot of his nearby royals, whether they're guards or any other politicians, immediately leave, taking their own way out, back door, if you will, and making their way out of the actual tournament grounds himself. That one I did on purpose. Uh, the... Uh, <laughs> uh <clears throat> what do you guys want to do at this at this point uh gaji you can choose whether or not you want to stay down by yourself in the sandy dunes or if you want to leave and meet up with your friends i would probably start waking uh making my way back towards Make the life. group <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. We are so, not adopting uh, that. No, <laughs> make, making his way to the back. Too late. But yeah, I'll, I'll turn and return to the group. Okay. Okay. So making through the crowd as some people, it's hard to get to your friends as a lot of people are in a pan on back cheering for your success. Um, but after about five minutes of time, you can move your way through and then find the group themselves. Okay. Along with a very, very bright blue colored Soma, big foam finger and whatnot. The moment I see him, <laughs> I want to tackle him in a hug. <laughs> Did he paint himself blue? Please tell me he painted himself blue. Oh my oh god. god. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> I I will return the hug. Uh to Dahlia. Oh, you did it! I knew you could do it! <laughs> and while I'm she's hugging him immediate cure wounds on his back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Z's landing um, against yeah, so Speaking of which, how is Daphinia just... looking? Uh, sorry. I'm not single digits, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna casually go up to the Finia and kind of pat her on the shoulder, and we'll say, oh, "Let's make that about uh, fifty points away on hand." <laughs> Thank you, Dira. I, of I, fifty points of pat on the back. More than kind of fifty points of pat on the back. That's right. <laughs> Edu gets twenty-seven. <laughs> And then as I let go, I hit him with another one. <laughs> get healed! You get healed. You get healed. You all get healed. Everybody gets healed. <laughs> Look at your seat. What do you get? Up. Healed! 24 extra points. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm on D&D Beyond. There we go. We're all a sad to see. And looking at us all kind of battered and, and filthy and sweaty and bloody and gross. We didn't die. This is You true. didn't die? Look nobody died. Here. None of us. Nobody died. Well, somebody <laughs> died. Nobody, no, no, I was getting that. that was, yeah. <clears throat> nobody important nobody, died. Nobody died on our watch. I ain't too thrilled with 
the way they run this. I got to tell you, if I'd known, I wouldn't have been too happy, but probably still would have done it. So. <laughs> but we did it. We won the tournament and somebody's got a pardon. And we get to go to a party. Oh, boy. I don't think any of this looks... Um, when, when do we got to go to this party? Uh, tomorrow evening, I believe. Yeah, is that correct? Tournament. That is correct. So, okay. um, the tournament still has one more day. Uh, the King's Tournament is what just occurred. The tournament tomorrow, which still needs to happen, is for anybody younger that are trying to strive to actually become a knight that actually have already kind of been like a squire or some kind of level that they're trying to achieve. Um, once that is complete, which is roughly about early, early day, late noon kind of area, uh, that is when the tournament closes down and the festival resumes. Um, so the next evening is when the actual gala happens. Um, to imply, it is not exclusively for you, but it is in your honor. <clears throat> I'll update our wardrobe since our last fancy night out. <laughs> I might be for the best. We only wore those ones. I mean, if you want to wear that again, Vera, you're welcome to. They are so ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You had it. 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 Yours has had a little bit longer to. You probably wore it more. Well, I only wore it because... once. I don't want. I don't want to go through all that figuring it out again, unless somebody wants to decide for me. I guess. Well, we hand conceal weapons in those potentially if. Somebody try something. Well, and it, I, I, but I like new clothes, it's armor that don't look like armor. Can we get that again? We should not try. I don't know. If so, we, you know, I'd like to say we wouldn't need that at a party, but seeing how this king and queen are, knowing our luck, <laughs> come armed to the teeth. <laughs> well, I think it would be a good idea to at least try to find something. Well, I'll go along with you for sure. Nothing else I can carry help carry purchases. Are you guys still in the arena at this point? I think Probably we're kind of the back door, right? Working our way outside. And... Well, the back door is just... <laughs> the back door is only for these special executives. But the... Uh... <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta go into the front with, with everyone else. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so we're attempt attempting to have this conversation while 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 getting through the crowd is your okay. is what you're saying. As you start leaving the arena, there is immediately three extravagant carriages that are covered by Nelithurian guards. Now these aren't the guards that used to see in, not the paladin armor. These are more lightly armored leather, but very extravagant looking kind of guards. As you immediately carriage door opens, you just see slowly opens up, and you immediately see the queen walk out as a much of the group moves out of the way for a path to be open for you. As immediately as she stands there, she passes on a note to a young matron. As she comes running over here into your, your direction, as you can see, there's a seal on it and she just hands it over. And she just kind of like bows and she doesn't even look. She just kind of has it in her hand as she just kind of steps in front of Gaju. The note is for me. Mm-hmm. She doesn't say anything, though. She looks like she's not supposed to speak. I'll take it and open it. Okay. Uh, you see that it has a... The seal on it is the crest for Nelithir. Uh, as you break it, you open it up. It is a trifold envelope uh, that is actually written in gold calligraphy on it. Um, and as you read it, it looks like the letters actually kind of glow as the way you read it whether you read it out loud or not. Um, and it gives you a formal invitation to the actual gala itself. Even though this has just been announced, not 20 minutes ago, this has already been made. Uh, the event will be will begin at 8 o'clock the following evening. And you are welcome and you are asked to arrive by 7. Please dress your best. And there are no restrictions on weaponry. Do 
definitely want that armor dress. Did As the queen get out of the uh, out of the carriage or is she in it? She is standing by the carriage, but she has like one foot on the ground and the other one on the carriage ramp itself, like the actual steps that lead up into the carriage. And she's just making sure that like the process is being acknowledged. Like she's making sure that you actually did receive it and you did read it. But she's not actually bombastic side eye the whole time. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, um, even though it does say for Gaju, it does also represent for Sifunia and Deer as well, as this is also a, an invitation for all those who attended the tournament. Trixie. <laughs> right. Trixie, technically. Yes. Uh, um, the whole group itself is not invited, but everybody's allowed to bring a plus one. Oh, everybody's covered. <laughs> um, I'll kind of roll it back up and slip it in um, my coat or whatever I'm wearing. Um, and kind of look in the direction of the queen. Um, and just give her a stern nod. Okay. Just acknowledging that I've read it and I accept the conditions. She just kind of crosses her hand in front of her chest and she just gives you a simple head bow. As she just looks at the matron, the matron looks back and she just kind of like does this to the matron and this matron just kind of like takes one of the packs that's on her on her uh, belt, which looks like a small coin purse. As she again bows, doesn't see anything, and she just gestures to you a coin purse to take. I take it. Uh, what's inside is a coin purse of 100 platinum. Oh. With a note inside... Dress your best. Okay. We're going shopping. <laughs> Damn straight. Uh, yeah, we're going shopping. <clears throat> I think everybody will be required to dress their best. I'm sorry, dear. Uh, <laughs> as the matron just bows and immediately runs back over as they load up the carts and immediately leave. I mean... My best is my best, but I'm happy to go long. I think if you want to wear your nightshade dress, it looked nice. Whatever you're comfortable with. <clears throat> Maybe we can just get you some nice accessories for it. I oh my gosh, I saw... Judgment on that. I saw the most beautiful necklace. It was like this big. It was in one of the shops we should... I think it will look great on you. I will follow your lead. <laughs> you can also get fancy new weapons to go with your fancy new outfit. Now that's a little more my speed. Although I'm pretty set there too. But let's let's see what we got. Let's let's see what we can do. We're celebrating, right? Yes. Sure. Let's do it upright. However, we're meant to be doing it. And need a new shirt. I think I ripped my sleeve off before. What's oh, well. to your sleeve? Oh, I, I, something happened, I remember, at the night. Sh it's been so long ago, but something happened, and I remember I ripped my sleeve off for a thing. I think there was something like, I think your buttons somehow got ripped, somehow. That, no, that somehow. was a whole other issue, and that was shoddy craftsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right. <clears throat> So, oh, do, does, does anyone need more healing? Let me ask this now. I have healing hands. Oh, oh shit, I healed. You're hesitating, I cast Cure Wounds. <laughs> it, was, it was 50. 50. <laughs> Thank you, because I definitely healed my other character. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't healing how them. Much, how much is it, Talia? <laughs> How did Fearna um, get in here? <laughs> I'm like, this is so hard to go as cross generational. I'm missing wings. For, for Zephyr, this, uh, this is why 17. we decided to take off one session Thank next you. week. Do you need more healing? I'm. Do you look like you need more healing? <laughs> you're, you're hesitating. More Probably. healing. <laughs> right, more, more healing would be nice. Stay when. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're just going out the cast. We're just gonna cast prayer of healing. <laughs> you, I 
definitely was in single digits. Not. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so. It's funny what happens in uh, 10 years. <laughs> right. Yeah, anyone in my vicinity that needs 15 extra points, you get those. Appreciate it. I'm only down three, so yeah. Okay, I'm looking much, much better. Me... How much better? Um, more than halfway there. <laughs> Prayer of healing one more time. Let's go. <laughs> I, I'm doing my due diligence here. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Why are you rolling so low? 19 points. Additionally. Get healed. Eat them up. Yeah, it's amazing how much better shape I'm in since I remembered to use the charges on my damn shield for a change. <laughs> Amazing. <clears throat> Alright, Dee. I think um, I need to take a second from casting spells. Are you okay? No, oh, I'm great! I'm good! We get to go shopping. I, I healed you guys. No one died. No one died. Let's go shop. No one died. And maybe find you some more mead? After this tournament, yes, I could use the drink. You, you, you seem to really like that mead they had, so... It was so good! It was raspberry flavored! I want... Oh, that does sound good! It was so good! You can try what some! What if they had any pineapple? <laughs> we'll go find out! Let's go! And I link my arm with Deer and we start walking. Alright. Hey, if they can have raspberry, they can have pineapple. <laughs> what if they have a raspberry pineapple? Oh, that's an interesting combination. I'm sure we could find it. Um, real quick, as we are leaving, can I look around and see if I can find my parents? Sure. Uh, around. Give me an investigation check. Okay. Oh, no. That's an eight. <laughs> um, throughout the crowd, it is hard to kind of spot specific people that you didn't know where you were. Um, I'd say it takes you about, like, ten... 12 minutes until you eventually do spot them as they're kind of like waving like the crazy ass parents trying to embarrass you in the distance. I love them. Uh, perhaps I should say hello to my parents. <clears throat> oh, we go shopping. That's all oh, right. Yeah. Of course. <clears throat> I will weasel my way through the crowd. As, as, as you get closer, you can see them talking to him. It's like, oh, there he is. There, there, there's a son, the winner. Hey, hi, hi. Oh <laughs> I will just go up and hug <clears throat> my parents. They immediately congratulate you and they give you a big hug. It's like, all right, hang on one second, sir, 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 sir. Yeah, are you ready? Yeah, he's here. Quick, quick, quick. All right, don't move. As you immediately just see like a guy trying to draw you, like he's trying to take a piece of art, but he's doing like a quick drawing of you. Now don't that I yeah. <laughs> now as I was just like okay, your 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 mother really wanted this a nice family part, uh, picture. Don't don't move. Look really good and just stay still for how long do you need, sir? Uh, an hour. Oh boy. I mean, I could have paid for a more professional painting if that's what you really wanted, mom. <laughs> No, oh, no, 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 it's fine. We, we, we got this. You're good, you're good, good. We'll, we'll, just, just stay still. Yeah, yeah. And she kind of looks like it's cleaned off, like you're uh, taking off, like, some dirt off your shoulders, and she's, uh, clean off a little bit of smudge on your, on your face. They want to capture the moment, got <laughs> The one-hour long moment. <laughs> Quickest, like, longest snapshot ever. <laughs> um, perhaps you guys should... Go shopping without me, and I'll catch up. Oh, sweetie, you can't go around looking Mom, like that. I just want a battle. Multiple, actually. Leave it. You can fight and still look clean. I am clean. Are you sure some of us could stick around, or...? Wait, uh, you know, you know what, you know what, uh, uh, you know, Dolly, you're, you you come in this too. You come in. Oh, <laughs> um, 
No, no, come on. And immediately she just grabs you and she just pulls you right in. Oh, all right. I'm sir, here. Sir, do, you, do you mind that she, really just, she just immediately just gives them like a little more money? Can, can we put another person? Oh, uh, Amelia just rips off a piece of paper and Amelia just crumples it up and gets a new sheet all set up. No problem. We'll just take about you know, another I, hour. I think I heard them calling. I'm going to grab Soma Hades and just kind of <laughs> run them into Dira and run out. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine some mead? in my mind this is <laughs> we'll like go find you some mead. this is like the festival where like you get your your cartoon big head drawn kind of like that. Oh god, <laughs> I hate that that is already what I was picturing. <laughs> I was totally picturing the caricature artist. Like it, it, for any of you that are like leaving, so not Gaju and Dali, you already see that like the body's already pre drawn. So the guys just drawing the heads on there is like the big head style on top of them. Oh God. But he's like really serious about it. <laughs> Telepathic to Dahlia, I'm like, sucks to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I like break pose for one second just to give Hades the finger and then go right back into it. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh if that's in your portrait. <laughs> no, <laughs> please, not the family portrait. <laughs> First portrait you get with the family, it's the big head cartoon style. <laughs> And Dahlia. <laughs> as long as they get Gaiju's tail right, am I right? <laughs> just has the has the random look where you're like looking behind, like staring at like the girl's ass, kind of like that, but just like staring at the tail, just kind of looking behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Is the tail red on the inside right now? Because it looks like you cut it off somebody. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it fell so that we can glue it on the base easier. <laughs> you monster! Who'd you take this? <laughs> That was Anna's sure. doing, <laughs> but we we would like it to actually stay on the base this year instead of like constantly popping off my body. So um, that's a reasonable that was request. Last year. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, so as as both of you have to stay still while the picture is being or the drawing is being designed, the rest of you just set the head up. So oh, I think. I think Dahlia would be a little sad if we go dress shopping without her. Do you guys have anything else you want to look at? I could use a snack. Nothing in particular. Get this man some books. <laughs> <laughs> gonna head over to like the turkey leg and shepherd's pie area. Okay. Oh, it's not you see that. You're seeing people with like the actual like almost like candied bacon like on a stick. And then uh, you actually see what look like are like fried like fried donuts around the place and stuff like that. Candied bacon on a, you had me at candied bacon on a stick. I am not a bacon <laughs> person, but that candied bacon from the part. Oh, my God. I'm going to try a donut. As you see, these are actually like pie-sized donuts. Like these are not small little donuts. These are like fat donuts, and they're not perfect. They are kind of like rude, mis, mis shapen, and they're kind of like maybe like the bakery decided to take like their remnants of like shit stuff and then powder them with like their sweets and everything like that. They're delicious, but they look like crap. Um, the vendor says, "Oh, try the pie-sized <laughs> um, donuts." I'm gonna just kind of grimace and eat pie. <laughs> um, can I, can I have the bacon and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Amelia just, like, goes up on the sand and, like, takes off, like, three and immediately wraps them up in a sheet and ties them and immediately passes you some candy bacon. And immediately kind of, like, you know, rubs his hand off on the side as it's, like, still has, like, some residue on it that's kind of, like, that's, that's it's kind of gives some, like, the gluey texture to your hand um, as it has a lot of, a lot of dried sugar on it. Break a piece off and hand it to Soma. What the? What? What is this? Just eat it. Why is it everything that I get get from all of you is sticky as hell? What the hell? <laughs> like I'm all about trying hey, new things, right. but but last time was like pocket it's pancakes. It's called sugar, Soma. Put it in your mouth. Eh. All right. And he kind of like takes like a little nibble. He's like, hmm. takes a little nibble and just, <laughs> and just really just puts it in his whole mouth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Mm. Mm. That's strangely good. 
Um, you want another piece, don't you? Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Um, just really just shoves it in his mouth. As it, it's like almost like someone who's never like a like a person who's never been introduced to sugar in his life immediately just like tries like the most sugary object in the world. Uh oh. <laughs> they were probably real strict with what you ate growing up, weren't they? I wouldn't say that. I mean, we pay, pay, pay yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, we don't need you crashing on us. Yeah, I. Am I supposed to have the shakes? <laughs> Go ahead, two pieces. Oh my goodness. I, I don't eat sugar. All right, get him some more protein. Gonna buy a turkey leg and hand him the turkey leg. <laughs> yeah, they start snumming down on some turkey leg. This has to go. Meanwhile, I, meanwhile, I am, I am, I am changing my mind and getting one of the giant donuts. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, these donuts are, are pretty large. Just you, you like grab one. It's like, it's like having like an oversized burger. It's like, how do I approach this? Kind of like that. I'm just gonna tear hunks off. Yeah, it, it like falls apart, but like you eat like some crumbles and stuff like that, and it's it's very yeah, very good. Yeah, look at this paper that it's in. Um. But yes, it's uh, you guys are able to get yourself some snacks, some food, protein, meals. Um, what do you want to do, Hades? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab a one of the big donuts and okay. realize that once we all sit and are eating, we're just going to look like that end of the day red bear group <laughs> yeah. just sitting on the stone wall. Like... <laughs> Trying to find the one spot of shade. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Immediately taking off all the pieces of armor and just dropped them on the ground. Then remembering that you still got to take them out of the place and you're on the wrong side of the fair. Um, Once you sit down, you're not getting back up. Just kind of flopping. Why did I wear so much black? And then 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 you hear drum drum starting. You're like, oh, feet want to dance. Rest of body is going, no. Right. Um, you relax, have some food, have some eats. You still got a decent amount of time before the picture's done. Any other places you'd like to go? Well, we should find that maid for Dahlia. She's going to be in a state. Find what for me? Are we close to. Sorry. We close to what? I was I was gonna say, are we close to like the shopping area or no? Uh, so there's so if you want to go to the shopping area, it's like a block down, and it's um, it's what your um, your uh, blacksmith mage was in. He was in the shopping district, so it's pretty close to the event grounds, but it's just outside of it. So it's about like a ten minute walk to get there. Yeah, I can walk off all this food. Okay. Um, if if you all want to stay put, I could uh, scout ahead and see if I can clothing shops. Fair enough. Actually, doesn't sound like a bad idea. I'm gonna kind of sit back again, like oof. I'll just sit and keep nibbling at the donut and watching, and people watching. I will. Uh, I'll get up and just kind of like slowly start walking towards that area to start looking at different shops. Okay. Alright. As um, you try to get the lay of land as much as possible, give me either investigation check or perception check to see how much you can find without taking too long. Say That's a working class 20. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love that. Uh, all right, so they're all pretty spread out, but you're able to find a total of um, total of five. The nicest one you're able to find is what's called the piece of tailoring. This one specifically grabs your attention as it actually has a logo of what looks like a devil on it. Specifically, you know, it, it, it just for the group uh the uh, another one you find is a piece of patch uh this one looks specifically like a maybe less of a 
uh, already have outfits, but take what you got and repurpose it. Uh, there is the village, uh, the village fiber, which is a a cheaper end, but still has some nicer stuff. Uh, suit craft, which is only focusing on formal, less of if you want to weave magic or armor into it, and thread tailoring, which is less armor, but it specifically employs weaving magic into your outfits. What was the name of that one again? Thread ta- uh, thread tailoring. Be that. <clears throat> All these are kind of separated uh, by yeah. like about a block a piece, as it's like a long like business uh, district. Um, so far, so so far of a distance that they're not really competing against each other. They kind of have their own area that they run. All right, then yeah, I'll uh, I'll start heading back to it. Okay. All right, you reconvene with the group. Uh, yeah. So there's a there's a few places down there. Um, there's a very fun place. Uh, there's a place that will repurpose uh, items or your own clothing. There's a, a cheaper, but it's nice. And uh, I did see one Adira that has a, a formal armory magic stuff and then there's one that's less armor but more magic in the formal aspect of things that wouldn't be a bad one to stop at yeah. I mean if we're celebrating being fighters and they're saying there's no restrictions on weapons I don't see why we don't can't look like armor but it can be fancy armor get as much okay. protection as possible I don't really <laughs> trust king or queen they don't seem real nice. I'm yet to believe that this is going to end peacefully or easily at whatsoever. With our luck, mm-hmm. it's not going to be peaceful. Yeah, we need to be ready for anything, that's for sure. Sri does tend to repeat it. <clears throat> well, should we see if the other two are done? We'll grab mead for them. I'm sure they're going to need it. I'm sure. <laughs> They're going to meet it. As you all start walking back, you do see the end process as like the guy's like, all right, don't move. He's just like take the pencil to like measure everything. And he's like going through it. And you see like he's just doing some final touches. But you can see that no matter how Dali and Gaju look, he specifically looks like he was paid to make them look like they love each other as much as possible. So it's like the cheeks squishing against each other so tightly that they're all like the, you know, you know, the perfect family kind of family kind of look kind of thing like that. Um, as he finishes up, all right, perfect, done. As he immediately kind of flips over the page and turns canvas over, he really shows the group. As he immediately, your mother immediately runs up, it's like, oh my god, it's perfect. As she immediately gives him an extra couple silver for the work. Well, that is then, unique. How much did you just spend on this? Oh, don't worry about it. We're, we're good. We're fine. My face hurts. Here. <laughs> what is it? Just drink it, you'll be happy. Oh my god, thank you. Did we find raspberry did we find raspberry pineapple? <laughs> I'll say you found pineapple and raspberry, but not raspberry pineapple. So pineapple just mix them in. Raspberry. Pineapple right. and raspberry. Yep. Which one we did can you mix get? them ourselves. Just mix them. <laughs> yeah, just mix them. Yep. <laughs> that is pretty good. Long like a long island iced tea with like some raspberry in it or something like that and a little bit of pineapple juice not bad <clears throat> i take at least five sips <laughs> we're going for it <laughs> all right now 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 take it easy we still got chopping to do i uh, i brought one big donut back for dahlia and gaiju <laughs> now we're <It's>, talking <laughs> they're as big as pies they're real good. These pies. They don't look like much, but boy, are they good. As uh, Gaja's parents immediately just go, it's like, all right, you all have some fun. We're going to go find a shop nearby. They do framing of artwork. We're going to get framed. We're going to put this right up in the living area. 
Um, if you want to get dinner with us tonight, we're going to make something special for your victory. Um, you all have a great night, and we will see you later. And then Damien, they run off like with it, like a flag, you know, waving in the air. Oh, they are slipping away. Can I like slip some gold into one of their pockets? Uh, sure, give me a side of fan trick. <laughs> okay. Uh, I love them, but they're fucking broke. <laughs> oh no, that's the one. They're so happy with you. <laughs> What'd you get? That was <clears throat> one. So, um, no. <laughs> as you try to like drop it, you miss the pocket as it just like drops is immediately like Zarmia looks around. It's like immediately picks it up. What's well, <laughs> wrong? You found a coin on the ground. Oh, well, it's my lucky day. And he merely puts it in his pocket and they start walking off. <laughs> Thank you. They were so <clears throat> proud. It was precious. Mealy, the, the I... artist said, do, do you, do you all want to win together? Oh, no. Thank, thank you, though. I, I, I think that. <laughs> sure, I'm, I'm really there, good at there, the There's really no top in that. Uh, you know we're supposed to meet our friends. I, we again, may come back. Grab the two and, <laughs> I don't know. We've got some things to take care of, but we'll we'll try to come back if we can. Well, well you 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 let them uh, you come back whenever you. Oh, they're gone. All right. We'll spread the word. <laughs> All right. At some point, we'll all just get a very professional painting <laughs> on top of that, but not today. And not by him. Not today. Not by him. <laughs> Was it really that bad? I'm not a fan of caricatures. How about that? I thought it looked real cute. No, it is cute. I just as you pass by another person not who's the doing. Style I prefer. They're doing caricatures of a group of girls that want their picture taken, but it's just like that one guy that does a stick figure and just keeps circling the boobs <laughs> over and over again. My point stands. <laughs> is that what Anyways. he did? Or mine big? <laughs> the hugest. <laughs> oh, good. No, they only made the head extreme, not anything else. <laughs> oh, no. But the tail, also extreme. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's like, all right. I fully acknowledge. I do not have the biggest tail in this group, and that is okay <laughs> with me. <clears throat> all right. So where right. do you guys go? So anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, so anyway, yes, we uh, did a little bit of recon here, and there is uh, a couple places. There's a really fancy place, just a place that repurposes things, cheaper but nicer. There's one that's formal but with magic armor, and then there's one that's formal but just more magic than armor. We did some real recon. The magic armor shop? That sounds appealing to me. Okay, so let's be, let's be armored fancy. So suit craft, or not? We can yeah. spot that. Yeah, suit craft. Okay. All right. Uh, as suit craft is one of the ones near the more expensive part of town, it takes you a little bit to get there, but uh, you get closer to it as you do see a very intricate metal sign that specifically what looks like uh, <laughs> a, a logo of what looks like a breastplate with a jacket over it. Um, as you go inside, you do see in the window that there are three mannequins in total. And it looks like they don't do anything necessarily to hide the armor, but their looks are specifically made to flatter the armor that you're already wearing. Um, uh, as you go in, you do see more of the looks, and you actually do see what looks like um, a female elf that's currently getting tailored right now. And she looks like she wears very thick leather armor. And whether or not this is the armor that she already had or something they made for her, they stitched in what looks like a collar and like a trench coat base on it. So the leather armor is the overall like whole suit in the process, whether or not it was hers before or something they made for a custom. But it's like almost like a formal battle attire that they made for her that they're currently getting tailored. Um, based off all the things that they're doing for it, it looks like, all right, so how do you want the legs done? A little more fitted. Any specific spots for weaponry? Uh, can I get two holsters for the back? Do you want them concealed or out and about? Two concealed, two out in the open. Anything for larger weapons? No, just simple weapons would be fine. Any magic? 
No, this will work. Perfect. They're going through like measurements and doing all the different tapes and everything like that going through there. All right, we can get it done for you in uh, three days time. Hey, she immediately pays him an extra gold for the troubles and immediately walks off. As immediately the person who is measuring him, you see this <clears throat> male elf, almost very, very thin, but shaved sides, slicked back hair that's kind of looking a really tight pony. Um, and like the thinnest little mustache immediately comes up. Ah, welcome to Sucrat. Uh, I am Gerald. How can I help all you? Uh, we hope you can. We're we're wanting to get outfitted for the gala tomorrow night. Oh, oh, you've been invited to the gala. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. Uh, are we looking for an outfit for everyone here? Um, I think for me to go with this. With uh, the army that we're now. Oh, another? Okay, fantastic. Anyone else? I might look around a little bit. The same, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if some of you are interested, feel free to look around. Everything is open. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, prices aren't everything, but that does not include tailoring and any modifications you want to it. Everything that's on the shelves is base without any modifications. Whenever you're ready, let me know and we can work on whatever you need customized. Um, as you can see, walls for all the bases, walls for all the accessories, and then he kind of like points up on the second floor for all the magic implements. So it's like, here's like your coat, here's your like breastplate, here's specifically where you can put different things attached to it, and here's where you can get magic implemented to it. Whenever you're ready, please let me know. Feel free to look around. I mean, it just kind of walks off and starts working on some of the tailoring. As you see I this... I look at the walls and I look at Dahlia. Help! <laughs> uh, this one looks sexy. Come over here! <laughs> <laughs> I follow her. Oh. I'm sorry. We interrupted you. Um, As we start looking. As you start looking, everything's actually organized by specifically the type of armor that you want. So if it's specifically a lighter, leathers, hides, mediums, leather, uh, lights are over on one side of the wall. Heavier specifically metals, steels, um, and any kind of scales are all put on the other side. And then they're all organized based off how heavy they are, aka their AC rating. So... Um, whether or not they specifically require strength or dex separates it between what parts they are in the room. Um, and then you can go off of that. Okay, what what do you like? We'll start there. I mean, I got, I, I got this. It's got the, the blue and the sword of silver and I don't know, something... Fancy okay, so you, do you want to match bl the blue and silver, or do we want to go? Do we want to go out of our uh, comfort zone with a new new color scheme? What do you got in mind? You don't want to ask my opinion. I will pick you fifteen different things. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can only wear one. I I know, but that's the fun of it. It's like dr it's dress up. Okay, pick the three things that you like the most on this wall. And we will accessorize. All right. So I'm going to go look at, I guess, breastplates and stuff. And I don't know. We'll get something. I'm, I'm going to kind of gauge Dahlia's reaction as I'm going to look at things. Okay. And, yeah, that was my reaction. <laughs> and I will probably come up with something that looks really simple and probably very close to what I'm already what I already have. Okay. All right. And then something that's very very ornate and probably and 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 something that is that when I look at it makes Dahlia's eyes light up the most, which looks like what? Uh, that's 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 Dahlia. up to Dahlia. <laughs> I dare what never wear. <laughs> yeah. But what do you got? Me, uh, I <laughs> fantasy women armor probably. <laughs> what kind of armor? Like, like the 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 classic stereotypical fantasy like female armor. Oh, really? I was uh, wearing my armor. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, 
Okay, yeah. I know that's not her style, though, so I will I will be like, oh my god, okay, but not this, not this situation. All right, well, yeah. maybe this one, and I'm, I'm going to point at something that's a little bit less over the top, but still very, like... Probably something that would fit... A little, a little less red sign, a little more like Hyrule. <laughs> yeah, something that's like got the coverage and like the function, but has like ornate embellishments. Um, right. Maybe some cool designs. Okay. Or maybe like a jewel so, in it. Or yeah. Something. So, so basic, super ornate, and in between, but w w in, but veering more feminine. Okay. That's what we've got. Okay. So you're able to put together pieces that are very similar to what you have, but give it more of a, a, a full feminine twist than like a gender neutral kind of uh, look and however you want to take that is however you want to go but um you can choose whatever kind of armor you want specifically for it uh and then um from there you can choose specifically depending on the price of how many accessories you want attached to them if they're concealed and if you want any magical implements put on it as you go through you can see that there's much like when you got your last outfit there's ways to conceal weapons much like you were able to like like attach your sword and make it disappear there's different ways to do that in here but specifically attaching magical implements to change the properties of the outfit is what's on the second floor but in here specifically shows like okay are you going to put your sword in your back or are you going to put it in your side or do you want the ability to maybe have like two swords on your side or something like that they specifically just want for tailoring purposes of how many weapons you're going to have attached to it um mostly looking like the way that they tailor this is if if, if you only pay for like one accessory the, while you're wearing it you can only wear that one accessory kind of like that due to the way that it's fit um uh, and then the second floor it goes through a layer of different things that you can attach to it um, depending on how many magical implements you want to attach. So each magical implement costs some money and depending on that. For example, one of the more expensive ones is to have <clears throat> legendary reactions while you're wearing this. I.e. like you can choose to have the dragon legendary resistance. We can have three charges and you can choose to I make this succeed on a failed, you know, you know, mm. uh, saving throw. Uh, or another one is specifically allowing you to I had somebody save my phone. Amen. Did Gaiju relay to us the weapons policy that weapons are okay? I imagine he would have. Okay. Um. Well, do you, Dira? Do you do you plan on keeping your sword on you, or do you want it concealed, or like anything other? I just like assumed weapons? I have it on me. I mean, everybody saw it. I don't That's know. I'm, true. Shield don't seem real practical for a banquet but I don't like not being maybe it could be an ornate it. back piece kind of something thing? like that let's let's okay. I guess we let's go look at the stuff and see what could work that now way. are you sold on the blue and silver I know it's like your staple but do you want to step out and try well, new colors what are you what are you suggesting hmm what color are Deer's eyes they're blue right blue. <laughs> go orange just break the break the norm <laughs> <laughs> I, color theory would say orange. <laughs> There's a reason I went with that for myself. So but, I'll, um, I'll, I'll quickly well, explain. And, and, look she, at the, and she, and she did write under the, check, guys. <laughs> she did write under the gold, gold, gold knights colors. So no, gold would look very nice on you. Gold I could mean, be good. What about red or maybe purple or green? What do you think about those? I kind of like the red with the gold. Okay. Ain't, um, ain't much for, ain't never done red before, but we could try it. There's always time to try something new. All right, well, let, let, let's, good. let's try it and see what it, th let, let's see what it looks like. Okay. okay. All right. So as you start like putting on pieces, they have like clips so you can kind of like attach to see what the overall look kind of looks like as you put pieces together. Um, I'm not quite sure what you guys are trying to go for here, but you can describe how it's going to look. <laughs> well, there's, yeah, it's there's there's a picture in the chat. Oh, is there? Ben found something right away. Did yeah, Ben did. Oh, okay. All right. So, uh, so it's almost kind of gladiator skirt and 
Yeah. Yeah, roy- like a, a royal knight kind of thing like that and everything like that. All right, yeah. so you start piecing things together as you're able to uh, find some pauldrons that go with it and you give it uh, some extra armor. Um, as you go then, uh, since cape, you go upstairs and you do find like a couple capes that you can attach and, and there's two of them. I love the cape. Uh, and Big the white cape. and each cape has itself. They're very expensive, but each of them have a magical implement. Um, each of them have a name on them. Um, until you actually investigate them, they don't actually explain what to do. But one is called uh, Wings of Mercy, uh, and then the other one is I gotta open it back up uh, while I did that. Um, uh, Uh, Cloak of the Dragoon. I'm sorry, Cloak of, Cloak of the Dragoon? Yeah. Oh, God, what? I can't keep looking back and forth. Uh, Nothing? No, 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 it's not in the chat. Oh. The thunder scared me. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's getting, it's getting loud. Um, I didn't even know it's raining, then boom. Uh,. If you investigate each one, it looks like each one, it can only be activated once per long rest as doing anything other than just being a cloak on its own or a cape. Uh, specifically, uh, while they're activated, they only can last for one minute or until they're disengaged or the wearer falls in combat. Uh, the, um, let me pull up back the wings. When activated for the Wings of Mercy, Immediately, the cloak itself, the cape itself, turns into large golden wings, and you have a 50 foot flying speed. Um, uh, um, you gain the effect of Featherfall at all times. <clears throat> uh, let me see, make sure this is the right thing. Uh, all your healing. All your healing spells, any abilities that would heal someone are doubled. And then you have one charge to automatically touch someone to revive them back to maximum health. The cloak, the cloak of the Dragoon, uh, specifically while you wear it, when you activate the charge, the wing, it's the, the cape itself gives you large uh, skill dragon wings. During the process, during this one minute of time, you get a flying speed of 30 feet. If you are not flying, your AC gets increased by five as they become your shield. But this only happens if you are not flying. Uh, during this process, uh, any spells that have an elemental effect, fire, thunder, lightning, cold, all have advantage on their spell casting. All right. Think about that. I don't know. I feel like this this gold wings thing is like, yeah, that seems, that seems like something I'd like. Okay. I wonder how much these are. It looks like the price isn't fully given until you kind of like speak yeah. to the owner until he starts putting stuff together and start doing me- uh, measurements for a business reason, obviously. Um, sure. But you can definitely tell if that. You have is- to ask. Yeah. Um, you could definitely tell what the price was. Uh, you were able to figure out what the price was for the person who left earlier that was getting kind of like the trench coat for a real kind of look. And based off of that, without any imp- magical implements, uh, it looks like it was whispered as a quote of about uh, uh, 350 gold pieces for the tailoring. But you have no idea how much it costs to actually purchase whatever pieces were to purchase. Okay. <clears throat> I guess we'll find out. I'm afraid to ask. I mean, I know y'all got got a bit more funds than we used to, but I don't know. I guess we'll find out, right? <clears throat> we got to. Whatever it is. Okay. All right. This is... I like this. Okay. All you right. definitely need to get it. Well, what about you, Zephania? I didn't really see I still see have to call you Tracy. Tracy. Here, no, no, oh, I, I think we're maybe at the palace. Yeah, I we're kind of in too deep to to go back yeah. to Sifenia now. I suppose, yeah, well, I suppose you could say it was just a nickname or something. Anyway, let's find something for you. 
Oh, well, let's see. I'm not. You want sure. to look here? Or do you want to look at the other stores? I wouldn't mind looking at thread tailoring or or village fiber. You know, mad magic and the and the outfit wouldn't be bad. So yeah, that's to, kind of what I was thinking. To as remind well. you, thread tailoring specifically takes uh, uses regular outfits and doesn't enhance armor, but they give extreme amount of magical influence. And village fiber is kind of just like a simple shop that maybe does a few things, but not over the top like the rest. So thread tailoring does the fancy. Fancy okay, stuff. They magic. don't necessarily implement armor into it, but they implement but they implement more magical things that are kind of like what Deira just got for the cape, but kind of like for the whole thing. <clears throat> that wouldn't be bad to check out. I would, I would probably go there too. Well, anybody else planning to shop here before we? Uh... Um, I might be interested in something. Um, is there? I'm kind of looking for something that's not necessarily like plate, but um, kind of like a, a decorative, like filigree kind of look for the chest. Okay. And just for the chest piece? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, you can, uh, if, if, you're, if you're not looking for a breastplate or you, or you just didn't want that Just something decorative, really. Okay. Um, I'm not looking for function because I'm a barbarian. Fair enough. Uh, but, you know, uh, Yaiju has to be uh, fancy as fuck as always. Sure. Uh, like, you do find different things can be put together, and you can see, like, certain things that look like they're kind of aimed for um, maybe towards, like, the barbarian or, like, the paladin route or just somebody that kind of wants to not worry about the armor but maybe wants to show off a little bit more of, like, the muscles or anything like that. As you see, there's mm -hmm. different pieces of armor that are there for decorative pieces, but they kind of cut off very specifically around the show around the specific shoulders and maybe goes okay. and then and then does kind of, like, a side drape around, like, the hips and stuff like that, allowing you to have a weapon on one side without having to move the drape off one side. There's stuff like that and then um it looks specifically like those are meant to hold multiple weapons without an encumbrance but we don't do that in here uh but then it looks like mm -hmm. since there's no armor specifically placed on it it gives you more room for magical implements if you wanted more enchantments on it gotcha um i think i just want something right now specifically for the chest um okay uh, I want to go to the other place for everything else, but more, yeah, the the detail. Okay. A uh, bit there. Um, maybe if there's something to put like on the back where I could put like my some of my weapons, but yeah. Okay. I'd say you can find like a chest piece that gives you drapes, like I said, but it has like specific like some kind of enchantment on the back that allows you to like have like as much as like three great weapons on there without actually having the weight pulled down on your back okay. kind of like that obviously that would just be for more kind of flavor not for anything that you would have but it would allow you to have more comfortability by actually knowing that you can hold that many weapons without having to put them in a bag of holding um mm -hmm. i'd okay. say specifically if we want to do something more for specific things you gain if you wanted the cost if you want it if you're willing to cost pay, uh, if you're willing to pay more for it um anything that be equipped to the specific plate does not require to be attuned if it's attunement only gotcha um i don't know uh sure <laughs> okay okay so if you're only looking oh, for the yeah. plate, you're able to find like a couple pieces for that. You're able to find some magical influence where you can be like, all right, I can add like three pieces to the back of it. And then if they are attunement only, they do not cost against my attunement count. Kind of like that. Um, since that doesn't okay. necessarily need to be uh, specifically tailored as like you can find the fit for you, not too much needs to be done other than adding the accessories and the magical influence to it. As he merely comes up to you and he starts looking at it. Yeah, not, not too difficult. We can definitely get the set for you. Uh... If you're not looking for any extra armor, just specifically a good filigree, get mm -hmm. this ability for you to wield a lot more. Uh, maybe, uh, 
600. Gold. Correct. Yeah, gold. If it didn't have the attunement, what would it be? Mm, just be if it wouldn't have the attunement, uh, 300. We'll do that. Okay. So you're able to put extra weapons on your back uh, without having to worry about like a weight problem. And then you're able to have a specific like sleeveless kind of armor piece that you wear uh, that has a more designer look for you and you can add more pieces to it as he leaves certain like clips and different attachments to there. So when you go shopping for other places, you can actually add them to the piece. Okay. Uh, real quick, how much was Dira's thing? We don't know yet. Just so I can... Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah, just we trying. We have not had that conversation yet. <laughs> okay. Because wow. Dira's got a little bit That's... of everything. Uh, so we're going to get yeah. there. Um... That's uh, it for me for the store then. Uh, as... As he immediately goes up. So, ma'am, we got quite a lot for you. Uh, um, yeah. Well, come, come. Maybe let's let's, let's get you on the booth. All right. Uh, he immediately, uh, you know, if you don't mind, I'm going to take off some of the weapons. As he starts unhooking some of the belts and stuff like that. And he tries, like, to drape over, like, incomplete jackets and, you know, different kind of pieces together on you. As he tries to figure out a proper fit. So, how many weapons do you want on it? Well, um, I got my I got my great sword, and I, I mean, I usually carry a shield. And I'm not sure what to do about that, but well, if you want, uh, we have the ability for a shield to be summoned. If you want a sleeve that can summon summon a arcane shield, uh, that that would be real nice. If that's something we can do, I'm kind of glancing over at Dahlia every time something new gets <laughs> mentioned. <laughs> Because I have no concept of our finances whatsoever. What, I'm sorry, what? what's the total at right now? He's not saying not, the total right now. Hasn't said? Okay. Well, I mean, that's something to definitely consider. Okay. Uh, and he's... Uh, Alright, so... Possible shield, we got a great axe. What else do we have? A uh, sword. Great sword. Great sword. Um... What, what does the total with just those right now? With, with what she's currently has? Uh, if we're looking at this cape, the armor, accessories, we're probably looking about, uh, as he kind of like writes down some stuff and he's jotting some numbers down. Uh, at most, coloring, filigree, armor increase, magical implements, cape, everything working together. Uh, probably about 5,000. Do you have a cost breakdown? Like, <laughs> well, that is the price for them all together separately. The workings together. Uh, I'll I'll break it down because <laughs> there's no way for you to translate this. All right, so, so so yeah. yeah. Automatically, <laughs> uh, the whole outfit would uh, be the armor of your choice, and it'd be a plus three of that. Um, whatever color you want, whatever design you want. The cape itself, obviously, is, it, the cape itself, while it's part of the armor, does not allow, does not require you to attune to it because it's part of the armor. So the cape by itself would need to be attuned. This way, it is not made in that way. The anything that you put in those slots that you that you asked for him to put on there, so the long, uh, the great sword, uh, and whatever else you wanted, uh, require do not require attunement either, and they just get to be on there. Uh, without the attunement cost. she's getting a great sword on top of the armor? So no, no it, would, it would just be what just I'm already accommodation. No, she's got a specific okay. holster Forever. for yeah. the great sword, but while she yeah. is wielding that great sword with this, if it requires it to be tuned, she does not need it actually attuned for it to work while she's wearing this outfit. Okay. Um, all the abilities that come oh. with the cape itself, uh, and... Uh, an additional plus one to all piercing, slashing, and bludgeoning. Ira, do you want to wear this in battle from now on? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe we go back to my regular armor. I do like this cape. <laughs> the cape is lovely, but I, I'm, I'm pulling her without your, with outside of your yeah. shot of this sales guy. But, you know, for that price, I get to maybe talk him down a little bit, but... Why don't, why don't, why don't we see about 
go back to my plan, wear my armor and 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 maybe or maybe my other dress. But what if we got to, just got the cape? I mean, I can I don't I, I I can I can attune to it. That ain't a problem. Okay, but the armor looks so pretty. <laughs> Okay, what can we do without so currently? I it, it, well, I mean, I don't, I don't need the, I don't need the, the don't need to be attuned thing. I'm, I'm fine with staying attuned to them. Um, okay. As, as like another patron comes by and kind of hears like your little debate of what's going on, as someone comes by and you're like, just, just so you know, uh, if you've got something already and you just want to add something to that. There's a there's a place called a uh, piece of patch. They can they can definitely work with you if you just want pieces put together. How affordable are they? I mean, they're a lot cheaper than here. Do you work there? <laughs> mm, I would definitely not be working at a competitor's business while I'm shopping at their business. No. Well, we'll be good shopping here. I just was insight so. check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've said too much, and Emily runs off. Can I insight check his run as he leaves? I mean, it's 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 pretty obvious. Like that they're was trying to fucking they're, funny. They're trying um, to steal business. It. They're trying to steal business. Trying to find out that certain people can't afford this place. Like, well, we can take your work and make it better, kind of like that. So. Um, if you wanted to, you could just buy the cape and you can go over there and then they can, you know, you can pay them to actually like stitch it together and make it work in a way that you wanted to. I'll, I'll turn back to the sales guy. Be like, this is such a beautiful armor and Isn't you've, it though? You've clearly put so much detail and effort oh, into thank it. You. However, thank you. I think, unfortunately, the only thing that. I think the only thing that we might be sold on is just the cape. So we, we do have an armor similar. It doesn't require attunements and all that. And it would be a lot more budget friendly and affordable uh, for us to just maybe purchase the cape and either go elsewhere or <laughs> um, put it together no, ourselves. Character. He looks at the cape. Just kind of ups and downs it. A thousand. Is this the part of the cost breakdown? <laughs> Did he break down the cost earlier? Was this game only a thousand gold? Uh, he didn't that. break down the cost. He was breaking down what each thing did. He didn't break down the cost. Remind me, I'm so sorry, there was a million things. Remind me what the cape specifically does, just the cape does again. So the cape, the cape, you get one, you get one charge that lasts, uh, that you have to take a long rest to recharge. Lasts for a minute. When you activate it, the cape itself turns into golden angel wings. And you gain a 50 foot flying speed. Um, you get one action to touch somebody and bring them back to life for, for maximum health. Uh, all your healing spells and abilities are doubled, and I think that's it. Where the Fe fuck is it? Featherfall. Oh yeah, right. Feather yeah, fall. infinite, infinite featherfall. Thank you. I was like, I know there's something else on here, and I can't remember what the hell it is. Yes, you get infinite featherfall. Yeah, my tactical brain seized on that hard. Well, so it is both well, thematically and tactically appropriate. I, I, I am, I'm, I mean, I, I, I think that, that I, that's I put a hand on your shoulder. I'm like. Well, the one tart for the angel wings does kind of put us in a bit of a bind, you'd understand, you know, I, for overall cost. How about I, I just want to say as a DM2, 700 gold? These features only act, all these features only activate during that one minute. So it's like you don't get feather fall any other time. It's only during that one right. minute, just so this is applied. Okay. So what were you saying, uh, Dahlia? With. You know, th these are wonderful different aspects of the cape, but seeing as the time constraints on them are so not optional, uh, it is 500 gold. Gimli just takes the cape back with an insulted look. 
No. This is a piece of magic. This is perfect work. Good. My good question, actually. Um, the, the, the armor, without any of the attunement or magical effects, but the, the beautiful armor with the, the lovely tailoring and coloring, what, what would that run roughly? So just the, just the look, the armor, the look itself? The armor, uh, yes, the armor. Without any magical effects, no attuning, uh, that'd be roughly a thousand. Could, could you do us a favor? Combine the cape and the lovely armor for 1500, let's say. Give me a persuasion check. Can I assist? No. He doesn't like <laughs> me. Oh. He doesn't like me anymore. <laughs> what uh, did I do? Standing stand there with big eyes looking very bewildered. What'd you get? 17. 17. <laughs> counter 1500 for this outfit but there has to be another outfit purchased from someone else in your group I'll point over and guide you and be like oh, the gentleman right there I believe bought a top from you that was just a top though I'm thinking another outfit a top enough does not an outfit make Clearly, you're not trying hard enough. Depends <laughs> on the occasion. <laughs> well, damn. Apparently, you've never been to a castle. Might I add, <laughs> we are going to the king's castle for the tournament gala. May I add? We are guests that of does, honor. May I add that I'm sure that if you are, you should be able to afford such exquisite, ex exquisite outfits. Well, yeah, he really doesn't like you. I'm going to take my meat my and leave. <laughs> My good man, I think what my compatriot is trying to do is that if we go to this gala and we are there with the king and queen and all the hierarchy of the land that is important, right? We will be there and be able to say, you know where we got these fine, fine armor and this beautiful cape and this lovely top is right in your own very city at the suit craft. Somewhere that you can go to and find the most exquisite items and we'd be more than happy to just really praise the quality and beauty of your item. And craftsmanship of the pure magic built into it. <sighs> that is Anything a class and a bar next level. <laughs> <laughs> that is a a fine point. A fine, fine point. Give me one persuasion check. You already got him hooked. See if you can if you can pull in the win. A. The 12. He looks at you. You do have a point, but still, 15 is a little low. 17, and we call it a deal. 15, 15, and I will spend my entire evening praising your shop and your craftsmen. Hmm. Deception check. To a point of annoyance. <laughs> Deception <that>? check. <laughs> That's not a deception check. Oh, is it persuasion? <laughs> is it? Are you really going to do that? No, that's fine. Not twenty, motherfucker. Twenty-five. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's like, oh, all right. Uh, well, very well. You sing my praise amongst the king and queen's court. We have ourselves a deal: fifteen hundred, and we will outfit, colors, cape, and you'll be all set. And if you have any type of coin or token or something that represents your shop, I shall hand that out to people as they can use that to find you easy. I will, uh, I'll make sure I design something to make sure you got something to pass out of sorts. These, uh, I don't really keep too many of, uh, knickknacks along, but. It's more of a calling card for your wonderful shop. All right. Well. I will I will give him fifteen hundred gold. Okay. He really takes it. Thank you. For the lovely lady, I have not gotten your name yet. Uh, my name's Vera Malane and I could have done that. But right, all right. Thank Don't you. Well, thank you. My name my name's Derek Dara Malane. Well, my lady, what uh colors would you like this armor to be? 
I would like to also say uh-huh. that the cape itself attached to the armor, whatever colors you make the armor, the cape will the the wings will illuminate with that aura itself. Well, I think we were talking about the the, the red here and the gold here, right? Red and gold. Okay. Bold mm-hmm. choice. Bold choice. It's a little dated, but bold choice. I'm an old fashioned girl. <laughs> All right. And thank, thank you for your patience. Uh, if you have it for the court tomorrow, I can have it ready for you about midday, if you can return midday tomorrow. I can do that, yeah. All right. Red. All right. Perfect. I will have that all set up. And uh, you all have a lovely day. And I'll make sure for tomorrow I will have tokens of my shop ready for the gentleman. I'd be happy to distribute them as well. Fantastic. I know the value of word of mouth. Right. Oh, he starts taking stuff as from the, the daughter back. of the only blacksmith in town. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where else do you guys go? You got Dira complete. I'm, I'm looking back and forth between between Apollo and or between Hades and, and Dahlia. And that just looks exhausting. <laughs> How can you do that all the time? Just swigging my beer in the or swigging my meat in the corner. Hades did it, oh. not me. To be fair, well, I've both. come to find I've come to find in life that if you butter somebody up and make them feel special, they will more than likely go along with what you're telling. Alright. He just didn't like my throws. Anyway. Sophia, where's next? Thread tailoring. I think that's what we said, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like skip a little bit too happily in there for a new dress. Cause I am right behind you. Okay. <laughs> as, you can, got me psyched. as you can see, this place is more kind of like the true, like exquisite Renaissance fair kind of stuff like that, where it's like the really thick, gorgeous kind of gown. <laughs> like Victorian gowns and Renaissance gowns. And you can see that the overall look here is like, if it's for females, it's the long dress. If it's for males, it's a long coat. Um, High collar, whether sleeves or not. uh, But if it's sleeves, the thick cuff uh, with, you know, large boots or high heels, the very beautiful exaggerated kind of look with large, uh, intricate designs, thick, bold, fonts and design patterns on that almost kind of shimmer to the look um you can see that everything itself that are on mannequins uh already presets but they can be tailored to somebody's figure and everything itself has itself a magical implement built into it weaved into the actual fabric itself as you can even just assume based off of some of them like you can look at one as you can see this long dress that like v-necks from like the collarbone down but it has like this big huge fur collar and like fur sleeves and based off of like the feel off of it you can assume that whoever wears this is just like immune to all cold Uh, as you go to like another one you can see that the design on it almost looks very asian with the crimson and like almost like a dragon kind of design around it um as you look at you can see description that the wearer of this not only becomes immune to fire but they can resistant to cold and they get a flying they get a flying speed of 30 feet um as there's different things out there but those are like the front door ones as you see as you go further back they come more intricate as you can see certain ones specifically allow you to be resurrected as soon as you fall down to zero points some of them allow you to get random stat changes as the day goes on maybe as you wear it at night it has different abilities than wear them at day stuff like that i'm looking for the absolute most revealing <laughs> skanky <laughs> shit out there. Does so, the, the resurrection re- one when you fall to zero <laughs> HP or something? Does, does, is, is there any that butter my egg roll? <laughs> I'm assuming the most revealing one is just like it's just like this. It hangs up by like an actual neck piece and just comes down. It's like two long strings in the front and just is like a thin skirt at the waistline. This is. <laughs> 
I'm, I'm putting what my, my Pinterest find. I, I want something like that. <laughs> I want... Not leaving much to the imagination, but leaving some things. <laughs> this is the King's Gala. I want to be dressed to the nines. Okay. So you're able to find, like, one spot that might not be specifically for, like, battle ready, but maybe better for conversation as you Ooh, find these sexes, them off. <laughs> I want that one. as you find this outfit and you see some of them are very revealing much like the picture you just sent a lot of them instead of being like a resist the cold or anything like that they give you bonuses to intimidation or deception or insight or under certain situations maybe a sleight of hand while you're using your charisma certain things like that as all these are, okay. are um hang on there, there's there's some old notes that i have that might have to pull out for this uh okay so there's a couple there's a couple ones i got this is from like campaign two uh the uh oh boy uh while you're wearing this uh your charisma modifier and a charisma saving throw increased by five all deception checks, persuasion checks, insight checks, when people are looking at you, I mean, with advantage. Um, Anything for sleight of hand with that? We could add a sleight of hand to one of them. Ah, pocket dimension. <laughs> I forgot why I, I forgot why I made this, but the rack, the the random pocket the pocket dimension inside that you can store a small. I wonder where it is. It's <laughs> three small <laughs> weapons of of no larger than a dagger size. Alrighty, um, I don't know where those daggers will be, but you you've sold me. Uh, <laughs> that's all just with this one outfit. Yeah. Alrighty, um. I'm gonna try it on. Make sure it looks good. <laughs> okay. Uh, as uh, and it's gonna look good because it's me. As you try it on, the one on there, it might be looking for someone maybe a little bit smaller than you, so it's a little tight. Looks like it definitely needs some tailoring. Uh, whether or not you you want to be tight is completely up to you. Uh, but uh, you have uh, the outfit on, and uh, I mean, you know what it looks like. Uh, do you? Ooh. Ah. The whole scenario, or do you kind of like, nah, doesn't work? Mm. A little twirl. Um, I don't know who followed me and Sephenia in here. Um, Hades. I That's was your... gonna say oh, the gang's all here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. The gang's all here. Yeah. A little bit of like, ooh, ah, like, um. I'll say that there's like it's... one that's even like a little bit nicer than this one, and actually. Uh, uh, it has different accessories depending on your race, so you can even have some accessories that you can use with your tail, as your tail would be the sleight of hand, specifically than your hands. So it's an accessory that could go with this? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Um, is there like a salesperson nearby? Uh, yeah, so in this place there's specifically a female, uh, that comes up. She is a wood elf. Uh, she merely comes up. So, uh, how we? Uh, what are we thinking? How are we? You get it, how do we feel? Uh, I'm. I am loving this. It made me. It may need, need to be tailored a little bit. Um, I don't know. I think you look hot in it. This is. This is great look for you. Thank you. I feel really hot in this, but it, it's just it's it's for the King's Gala, and I don't want to be, I don't want to do too much, you know. Well, I don't know what your thought process is. Do, but do you think it's too much? No, not at all. I mean, it's it's definitely not too much. Uh, the I don't know if you if you you're you're definitely not more of a modest female uh the if you're if you're looking for uh to get attention 
as at the event this will definitely work in your favor depending on what you're trying to do or you know just uh look really good make other people jealous <clears throat> certain other people i mean you know there is one more that we have of this if you're curious to get a little bit more let's say potent. Of this correct okay um all right you have the other one. there's another one that i had and i just gotta remember at the bottom of my sheet Um, Get your cops. Do you think it's too much? <laughs> Do you think it's not enough? <laughs> For you, darling. Never. Ah, okay. So the other one I have uh, has Charm Person built into the, into the outfit. And Charm Person works as an actual cantrip instead of a spell. While we're in it. <laughs> You're going to be side roll as you die. <laughs> Alrighty, um, so that, that one, potentially, with maybe detail accessory, what price point would you be looking at? Well, are you, are you planning to put any weapons with this? Maybe something concealed on the tail, maybe um, something attached, uh, I don't know if you're going to be wearing any heels that can attach some blades underneath the heels themselves. Uh, do you have any like thigh high sandal heels? I, I yeah yeah I definitely got something like oh, that. I think that would look divine. Do you need um, any kind of for enchantments jewelry for them? And ex what would you offer? Well, are you looking for something more offensive or more in tandem with the outfit? Not for style, but uh, for the magical implement. Magical implement more. Defensive, offensive, um, anything that just would help with mobility. Well, if you don't mind, we did just get a return back. They only been used once. There was a bit of a scandal with one of the ladies. She oh, I love scandal. She used these. Uh, I mean, it's what they're made for. She used these heels on her husband, the bastard. As you immediately go, and she immediately just kind of like shifts them as like the heel immediately turns into a blade. I'm sold. How much? <laughs> Uh, for the whole look, uh, the tail, the heels, the dress, uh, she goes over the whole thing, uh, 1800. Okay, I hand it over. <laughs> Alright, All right, so, uh, for right now, for notes, uh, it's a plus, it's a... Turn this down, hold on. There we go. While okay, people, so you said plus five. Plus five, the Christmas season throw Christmas checks. As long as the person you are talking to is looking at you, you have advantage on insight, persuasion, deception checks. You can use your tail to as long as you're using your tail to do the sleight of hand. Your sleight of hand is plus ten. The heels themselves magically turn into daggers whenever you choose they can turn into daggers at the bottom of your heel and they're considered a concealed weapon okay um so sorry uh if person is looking at me advantage on charisma insight deception and I, uh, when they're looking persuasion? at you uh when you're looking at you persuasion mm -hmm. deception insight oh and it has the built-in charm spell okay Okay. And then dagger shoes. Dagger shoes. Uh, and if you're doing a sleight of hand with the tail, it's a plus 10. Okay. Excellent. I don't want to take this off. <laughs> I don't think it would look much different. It'd probably be the same. She's just going to live in this now. <laughs> Just, I'm just I, I, Midwest, Midwest layers. <laughs> so just I'm like, just lounging around in this, and I'm like, okay, Zavinia, what do you like? I just imagine like you guys are fighting up against a big bad boss, and like all you guys are coming to like this extravagant armory, just coming in wearing this revealing look, <laughs> just trying to. <laughs> Absolutely, stop and death. Okay, it's so, a strategy. Zavinia, 
distract the giant boss. <laughs> okay. Focus. Um, Focus. <laughs> you know, I, I really like that one, and I'm pointing to the mannequin with, like, the long V-neck, but can we get rid of all the fur, and why do you have a maroon? Maroon. Oh, okay. Uh, well, obviously, the color changes the implements. Uh, were you trying to have some kind of magical ability that was attuned with the outfit? That'd be preferable. What What do you have? Let me pull up what specifically. So, if you want to take this outfit and you want to compare it with that itself it would literally just flip it on its head you would have an immunity to the fire uh you would have a resistance to cold and that pretty much stopped there if you want it more amplified we can make it more amplified possibly maybe get some accessories in there involved uh if you want to maybe twist it up a little bit we could get rid of the immunity or add to the immunity maybe an additional power that activates to your weapons while you're wielding well do you have anything that kind of boosts strength a little bit those are tough to come by in the shop i'll i'll be honest with you um as she starts looking around but i think i got something in mind as, as she's immediately takes you over to like a different spot where there's like only a few different outfits and there's something very similar but instead of having the sleeves it's like cut like like just a a, a, a just like a v-neck with a sleeveless on top and it kind of cuts in a little bit and then flares out the bottom oh no you froze for, I froze? for a second it was me i was scared oh weird i don't know what the dress looks like <laughs> Yeah, you, you for about five seconds. Uh, so it's it's like cut off. It's like cut off the shoulders and like down the sides a little bit, and then it flares out around the hips. Uh, you can still get the moon on it, allowing you to do some fire um, with it. We'll do some excel around and allow you to. Oh no! The, most of the storms are hitting them up there now. Yeah, it's got to be the yeah. storm. Is it we me? Lost you for about five seconds again. Yeah. 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 That's weird because it's not showing me that I'm dropping anything. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, it was it was Discord that froze for like five seconds, and it was just mm -hmm. you. Hmm. That sucks. All right. Yeah, it's probably the weather right now. Well, yeah. Long story short, they have a way to give you accessories with a specific look to allow you to swing harder without actually having to be stronger specific jewelry and gloves to go with the specific outfit to add maroon but also increase your strength in the process um you can pick a style that you want but it'd be like a sleeveless look and then um the um the gloves themselves would be synced up with the look and then they would essentially give you higher strength value depending on what you want to spend depends on how much more of strength value would increase uh, automatically just like her outfit uh the strength would go up just like the charisma would and then it would also subsequently give you advantage on acrobatics and athletics checks that sounds pretty good what do you think dahlia i'm gonna <clears throat> turn around oh my gosh you better buy it how much is it uh, um, i don't know how much is it uh that would be 1200 1200 and it comes with and i'm gonna like hold out the kind of gold little bracelets and armor stuff and it it comes with all of this yeah all of it yes all of it you know i now if I you kind of like it if you want to do more we can add some more to it as immediately kind of like pulls out some boots and immediately attaches like some boots to it and immediately puts on like some extra gloves like some a couple rings that goes on the gloves as like the boots specifically increase movement and jumping speed the rings specifically give force damage to the punch. Those rings are nice. What do you think of the boots? Well, I kind of like them. Do you have anything shorter style boot? We can make them shorter. A yes, girl, show off leg. Yes. <laughs> if you I want, think I like it. If you want all that, that'd be 16 instead of 12. Hmm. You know what? 
I don't get to be fancy that much, so I'll take it. All right, so. Move. Oh, how fast money goes. So these will give you a plus five to your strength checks and strength saving throws. Your movement speed is increased by 30 feet. And your jumping speed uh, is doubled. Uh, movement speed, does that include flying? No, this is just your regular movement speed, not flying speed. Um, all While you're wearing this, all acrobatics of flex checks are rolled with advantage. Um, and if you are doing melee damage, you do an extra 1d10 force damage. So any piercing What was the, the four 1d10? I'm sorry. Force. Force. Uh, you also gain an immunity to fire. And then that's I like it. not burning. <laughs> Anyone else before I blip out again? Are you doing something right now? Then. No, I, I said, sorry, I said I think I'm the last one that needs something. Okay. I need the rest of my outfit, but I will wait. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think you want me only walking in with just a fillery plate. <laughs> I the, could. It's a look. You have... and Dahlia would make quite the, the pair. <laughs> yeah. You would indeed. He probably would have the audacity. <laughs> so he would have the stroke, new. and everything would be very different. All right, Hades, what about you? Uh, yeah, he's gonna start looking around, uh, looking kind of for that. Saw it or not? I don't know if you saw it. That like long Dracula esque looking fanciness. Oh, I did not see it. Um, I can post it back in there again. Hang on, I'm looking. I see Skimpy, Skimpy. There we go. Uh, oh wow, that's some Alucard level. I love it. Uh, Hell yeah. <clears throat> okay, so you're you're looking for the Dracula goth Victorian kind of style. I dig it. Um, I'm a, I look like a demon. Let's go with it. Yeah. Uh, as you go through, uh, there's a few that's going to fall into that criteria. There is the Void Coat. Uh, this specifically gives you properties of a Void Lich. Uh, this is going to be the more expensive of all of them, but the abilities themselves are specifically for only... This is only for Warlock, Sorcerers, and Wizards. Uh, so... Uh, you get a total of five uh, five legendary resistances for the whole day. These can be used whenever you want as a reaction. The legendary resistance is just like what sounds. You use your reaction and you automatically succeed where you fail as a as a saving throw, but only works saving throws. Um, you get an ability called Unraveling Reality. If you drop down to zero hit points, you automatically get brought back from maximum. You roll a d20 i have a certain cheat that uh cheat sheet that shows what new ability gets attuned to you for that day until you reset this is not a ne negative you gain a resistance to something uh the last thing is while you're wearing this you do not require air food drink or sleep you do not get exhausted uh the next one that we have that would go for it is the Cloak of the Telepath. Uh, this specifically gives you three features that tune to it. One is you get to telekinetically walk at free will. You get to walk off the ground at 10 feet whenever you see fit. And then you can just move around just as if you're walking on air. Um, you get an ability called Guardian Field. Uh, you can use your reaction to uh, add. Uh, you can use your reaction to add one EC uh, to yourself until the end of your next turn. Uh, this specifically just adds like an energy field around you. Um, you you can do a specific field that allows you to get plus two to your AC and stops people from moving you. 
uh, but that just goes to the end of your turn. Uh, basically, different kind of abilities that allow you to increase your AC when you're not being when you're not taking your turn. Um, let me see where the other where's the other one here? I got another one. Okay, uh, and then the last one is the uh, Cloak of the Echoing Arcana. Uh, this specific one decreases the spell requisite of every spell you have by one spell slot less. So 8th level is now 7th level, 7th level is now 6th, 1st level is now cantrips. Um, if you would recover spell slots at a long rest, you can choose to recover those at a short rest. And that's it that I got for specifically, uh, let me see, I think there's one more. Uh, okay, so I got the Spellweaver's Trench Coat as well, sorry. Uh, while you're wearing this trench coat, you get a plus two AC bonus. Um, as long as you're not wearing any additional armor or using a shield, you gain yourself a pocket dimension inside the coat itself. Um... You can use an action to place one item that you can hold in one hand into the pocket or retrieve one item from it. Uh, the pocket can hold up to 100 pounds, not exceeding the volume of two cubic feet. Um, as a bonus action, imbue a sigil with your magic intent to strengthen your next spell before the turn ends. You may either grant yourself advantage on the spell attack roll or, evaluate or elevate the spell save DC by three. So those are the four different things I got. <clears throat> Choices. Yeah, yeah, that's a few. Um, I think I'm looking at the cloak of echoing arcana or the void coat because both sound pretty sick. The void coat is going to be the most expensive, as it is going to be the most powerful out of them. The echoing arcana, I believe, is the second most expensive. Uh, let me pull up echoing arcana. Expensive. Yeah, that's the second most expensive because because Echoing Arcana makes spells cheaper. <sighs> oh, I might be tight right now because you're not doing anything custom. These specific ones, uh, so for the Void Coat, that one's going to be 4,000. And the Echoing Arcana is going to be 3. I don't think I actually am wearing actual physical armor, so I could just not. live with this thing. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um. <clears throat> yeah, that's and that's five. You said five legendary resistance a day. Correct. Yeah, it's very. Right, powerful. He's gonna. He's. Yeah, he's gonna try the void coat on. Okay. You know, put the whole suit on. As you immediately um, put it on, you immediately, you immediately. Like, you don't see it on, no one else sees it, but when you look at your own reflection in the mirror, you immediately see like this purplish kind of aura. Kind of like, almost like a lich kind of like surrounding you. It's not cursed or anything like that, it's just like this extra look that you see in your reflection. Um, I think, uh, yeah, I'll kind of turn to the, the shopkeeper and just be like, oh, uh, how much for this lovely garment here? Oh, well, be honest, it's been here for a little while. Normally, Five's a number, but it's been here for a long time, and for a spellcaster of yourself, uh, 45. You go potentially a little lower, let's say 30, 35, but I can make you a wonderful deal that uh, we are going to the Lord's Gala this evening. Uh, and, and oh, we, we are not ahead. doing this again. And you're <laughs> 4,500 4, golden pays for it. Oh, perfect. He takes it right out. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, sir. And he merely just, you know, did, if you want, I can get it tailored for you. Any additional accessories that you would like to purchase, I could get them actually stitch on for you. But I, I'll just say that sure. this look is already the style that you wanted. If you want to buy anything extra with it, like boots or anything like that, you're more than welcome to do so. But what I gave you is is the look of the picture that you sent. The very Alucard okay. Dracula thing. 
<clears throat> we'll do that and then just like a just like a walking cane just because why not a walking cane okay uh they don't have any regular walking canes here everything's enchanted uh there are i do have a thing for walking canes uh okay so uh there is a i bet you do I don't know how to take that. Uh, the uh, there is the cane of the hidden blade. Um, as an action, you draw out an arcane sword out of there. This represents as a plus three rapier, but you're automatically proficient with the weapon, even if you're not. Um, another cane specifically allows you to use it as a spell casting focus. While wielding it, all spells cast from, all spells using as a spell casting focus get a plus two to the spell damage and spell DC for your modifier and saving throw. Uh, and the cane of deflection. While wielding this, it substitutes as a shield in your hand, allowing you to get a plus two to your AC. Also represents this as a spellcasting focus. Each one of them is six hundred gold. I think I, I think I'm gonna pass on those because my okay. staff is way better. I'm just gonna use that. Okay, so. fair enough. It's got the moon, so it's fitting. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, yeah. That's right. People are going to think fucking invited Dracula in here. That's cool. <laughs> That's right. Ah, ah. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so I'll be like, yeah, you, if you can tailor it and make it the shape, that'd be fantastic. How would you like it tailored? As is like going through, it's like, it's like, do, do you want it to look like you got a little bit more up on the upper body? Do we want to show a little bit more of the package down here? Do we want to kind of take that away? We want to kind of accentuate the tail. What do you want? Uh, he like <laughs> kind of gets real close and he's like, <laughs> He gets really close to the tailor, like right in his ear, and whispers, "Make me look better than that guy." And I pointed so much. <laughs> just, just when he looks around the corner, it's like, "Hmm, we're gonna need a lot of work, but I can make it happen." <laughs> and then yeah, so then he'll <laughs> okay. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh it looks God. like a football fan right now. What do you mean we need a lot of work? <laughs> that man's probably over there eating a pineapple dressed to the head toe in blue. <laughs> Foam finger and everything. <laughs> but it looks like a badass wearing it. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um... By the way, y'all can burn in hell. Uh, the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you uh, like our gala outfits? We love you. <laughs> we love you. Happy early birthday. Thanks. <laughs> <sighs> That's like my mother's favorite picture of me, I swear to God. Chuck so opened the package. Like, what the fuck is this, right? <laughs> So we are informed uh, by the my, architect of all this. My my overly blonde hair with my Superman shirt and my so Barney cool. slippers and my Velcro cape. <laughs> I was proud as hell. As you should be. As Look at that. That the absolute cop. That little champ. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny adorable <sighs> Superman. What oh. not to be proud of? <laughs> Incredible. <clears throat> <laughs> all right <laughs> all right um, so regal it up in here yeah right <clears throat> <laughs> oh man now the question is did you get it from my wife or did you get it from my mother that's the question we can't answer that question <laughs> okay <laughs> we can't um <laughs> So you guys procure oh the last person we got is got you to finish off your look yeah. so you got the you got the piece of armor you already procured yeah. Are you going to get something else when it's from the, uh, um, from the, uh, uh, thread tailoring as well? Or, or, yes. okay. Um, <clears throat> I'm kind of hoping to find something that's kind of like tight pants with like a wrap 
skirt-ish around it and then goes over the chest. But I'm okay. thinking maybe the the um the wrap that goes over the chest is actually more um like an Egyptian uh bead. Yeah, dress. sure, sure. Um just to kind of tie back to his own cultural stuff and then where they currently are as well. So Okay. Something vaguely like that just to further complement the um the the plate. <clears throat> okay. As you can see, the, that style is very common around here as is made of this area. Uh, a lot of them in here are specifically tailored to whether it's kind of focused on nature or communion with the gods or uh, specifically maybe it, um, since the common combat style around here is dual wielding, allowing you to get extra proficiencies when you got a weapon in each hand. There are different mm -hmm. things you can do with this. Um, but yeah, you can get that kind of style. Um, and much like the other kind of magical implements I was saying before, there are different kind of ways you can modify it. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> but yes, the primary ones that are for anything that's native to Nelithir, specifically the main form of combat is dual wielding, so it would allow you to get proficiencies with a second weapon, uh, or specifically being able to communicate with the gods of Nelithir, or anything like that. Um, if you want something else, maybe a strength increase or resistance to something, let me know. We can... You know, you can get tailored a certain way. Um, Let me think. I wonder if I actually have... There's one other thing I have. Hang on a second. Uh, there is the... I don't particularly care for anything involving the gods. Um... Okay. I'm sorry. There is one piece of armor that is native to Nolithidi's gods. It is the armor of the Sunseeker. Um... You gain attunement to what is called solar magic. Um, as long as you're in, as long as you have the sun glooming over you, all spells being cast while you're wearing this require half of their actual spell slot cost. All radiant damage and fire damage is doubled. Mm. The sun's great, but if that requires the sun, that's not going to be very useful at a gala. No. <laughs> It's not like it, re well, it requires it to use those features, but it's not like it's completely useless when you don't have it. You still got the uh, radiant and fire abilities. It's just, yeah, it doesn't affect anything your spell slots if you don't have the sun on you. <clears throat> okay, so if it has the sun on it, it's half of the a spell, spell slot? Yeah, help the spell. So okay. level eight spell is a level four. Um, and that was for Radiant? Radiant and Fire. Um, how much is this fine piece? Um, for this piece of accessory... That you, you're, you're not, are you? You're the winner. Yes. Well, it would honor me if you're going to the gala to actually wear something of my store. So if this is what you want, on the house. It's weird, like Ben is like totally in shadows right now. <laughs> Tell you what, I will accept if in exchange I can buy some of your finest jewelry for my arms, my horns, and my tail. Absolutely. And perhaps if you have anything that may pertain to teleportation, whether that be short or long distance. Hmm. I think we can do two birds, one stone as he immediately runs over to the back and grabs a few like jewelry cases and kind of like slides them across and like opens them up as you see different kind of bracers, rings, bracelets, necklaces, and caps for pointed ears and horns. Um, and then kind of like turns over some drawers and lifts up a couple. 
as um you find specific ones that you can really tell they're meant for teleportation as they have kind of like a, a more of a dark shimmer to them as you can tell that they either go on your ears or they can go on your horns but either way they have to be capped not like a ring that goes down specifically oh god now these make sure you're tuned to them first otherwise the results could go a little wonky but if you've been there before you've seen it you remember it close your eyes open them back up and you'll be standing there how much are these specifically for both of them, a hundred. Could I pay you more to have ones that don't require attunement? Hmm. I could take them and possibly modify them. Will take me some time. I definitely couldn't get them done by the time of the gala, but I could get it done. Oh, you will. I'll buy them now. And should things go swimmingly at the gala, I will come back in hopes to uh, make it better. Fantastic. Melee shows off some other jewelry, passes over some rings uh, for both fingers, ears, and horns, along with different kind of bracelets and bracers for you to accessorize yourself with. Um, I imagine he's kind of going a bit overboard (laughs) with jewelry Um, so I don't know it is not a a natural thing around here for people to have a lot of gold (laughs) on it is very (laughs) I mean piercings all over a lot of cappings it's just the only difference is is, um, the only difference is that horns are not common around here so seeing specific Mm -hmm. accessories for horns is not a common thing but accessories for wrists legs piercings on the face and um ears are very prominent okay yeah so i will just get like a bunch of different stuff for all of my fun appendages you get so much jewelry that even (laughs) if you went naked you'd still be wearing more than dahlia not that one. <laughs> That's a challenge. One doesn't need decorating. <clears throat> all right. So y'all, pro- I'm here for it. Though. Y'all either procured or place an order for the next day. Uh, how much? How much would the jewelry cost me? Uh, it was included with the with the caps, so the one hundred. Okay. Okay. Good. Throughout all that, several hours have passed. It's getting pretty late. After the tournament's done, shopping, night has come by. What would you all like to do? We have a lot to celebrate for. That T- we do. Time to get drunk. And I don't <laughs> feel like I feel like this party tomorrow night ain't the kind that we can relax at. Let's find a place we can do that. Even if it's just Mama's house, although. Oh, okay. I mean, we can, we can go there too. I, I mean, that was just if there weren't anywhere else. Yeah, your your parents said they wanted to have a special dinner with us all tonight. So. That's right. Right. Uh, <laughs> we should probably not keep them waiting then. Yeah. Let's um, go there. Could always go out after. True. This is fair. I did want to see if I could catch uh, <clears throat> Cisne before we returned, but that'll depend on if she's out and about or not. I don't know uh, how her tournament went or not. But otherwise, I'm fine to return. Do we want to swing by the tourney grounds and see if she's over there? Just take the long scenic path back to your parents. 
fine by me, if that's okay with y'all. Of course. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> let's do it then. Um, I guess I will start leading the way towards the tournament grounds and just keeping an eye out to see if I see the Green Knight anywhere. Okay. Uh, give me an investigation check to kind of look out for her. Good lord. My dice hate me tonight. As uh, you were looking for sorry, it, was, it was investigation? Yeah. That was a five. Yeah. You can assume she's maybe not here right now, or you just don't see her. One of the two. <clears throat> I kind of wanted to speak to us about something she told me before the tournament because I think it might help with the ship and maybe keeping them in a safer place, but... You may just have to wait another day. We could check and see if she's over by the... the I think a brain fart. The hotel for the champions. Did they yeah, have a name? where we stayed last night. Yes. No, it didn't have a name. Oh. Okay. Or we weren't, weren't given a name. If the detour is fine. I'll follow where y'all go. How uh, you lead the way. As long as we don't make your mom mad. I think we probably still have a little bit of time. <laughs> um, <coughs> I actually don't know where it is, so since you were all well, there the night before... Oh, it's over this way. Okay. Follow us. I lead the way. Where are you guys going? Uh, we're, we're going to the inn that the competitors stayed in last night. Okay. We're going to say she's there. Okay. As you move over to the Tourney's Inn, currently a soiree is happening at this current moment. As you look around, you do see specifically... Um, uh, let me, uh, you do see Cisne and... Um, and Finia talking over in the corner. They're not being like super secretive, but it seems like the place is so loud that they're just kind of conversing in the corner. Both of them are not wearing their armor right now, and they're both wearing pretty casual clothing. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> um. I don't know if it would be a good idea to approach her as a group or not. Um. Uh, they have snacks over there. I'll. You guys want to join? Pineapple. We oh. <laughs> snacks. Pineapple. <and> pineapple. <laughs> I'll go speak with her real quick. <laughs> By the way, was this you? Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> <laughs> what? We don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's really it's mean. That's really mean for you to accuse Draco. <laughs> Draco did nothing wrong. <laughs> uh, I also apologize, to viewers, if we go offline. Uh, the reason why people say moving downstairs is because of tornado warnings going off right now oh, in our town. Oh no! So, yeah. So hopefully we do not go offline, or and it does not go too bad. But we will persevere on if it still works. Oh All right, so then if it is no dying, the basement, not allowed. I guess. <laughs> so what do you? So yeah. who's all going to go uh, to Finny and Cisne? Uh, I guess I am, and everybody else is snacking. Fair enough. All right. <laughs> Unless you want somebody with you. <clears throat> I'm fine. I just don't know if she wants to be crowded or not right now. Um. Do whichever you wish to do. Uh, well, if you need an extra person, I can help. 
blood pineapple, like Dara said. So. Go get your pineapple. If I need your help, I'll call for you. How about that? Psychic whispers still up. I make my way to the pineapple. <clears throat> I think they have candied pineapple over there. That looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, no, they did that. Sorry, for a half second breaking immersion, Joe just lowered his camera, and I was half expecting a shirt with all of our pictures on it. <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty great. <laughs> the absolute plot twist. <laughs> Next year, maybe. Um. <clears throat> so I, I guess I will uh, kind of start making my way over and then just kind of pause to like make sure that she knows that I'm approaching before I completely interrupt their conversation. Okay. Um and I'll I'll wait to see if she like waves me over or tells me to wait. They don't necessarily wave you over, but they kind of try to make it apparent that you're not unwelcome, but they keep talking. I'll hesitate for a moment, and then I will slowly approach and okay. join them. As you get close enough to hear their conversation, you can clearly hear a apologies pass back and forth between them, as maybe there was bad blood once upon a time. But the last thing here for them is what the plans are for tomorrow. As immediately they both congratulate you. As Cisne. I'm sorry, this was Cisne and who? Finia, the captain of the guard. Okay. Uh, apologies to interrupt. But oh, no you. apologies necessary. No, no apologies necessary. We apologize. We did not find you earlier to congratulate you in person, but things got a little bit out of hand and we had to talk. But it is good that you're here now. Did you at least take some time to find yourself an outfit for tomorrow? Yes, it's been handled. Uh, I apologize. Um, plans for tomorrow? And is there something else going on? Or Just the gala. I mean, we're invited as well. I see. Finia just kind of like looks at you. She kind of like backs herself up to the crowd to so no one can see except for the two of you with the words that she's saying. Any thought about what I mentioned to you? When you left the stadium. Yes. I don't want to say that there's, like, disappointment on his face, but there is apprehension and just overall nervousness. I spent 18 years on the run for the, pra the last previous king's death. I will not be involved in another regardless of which kingdom that is, or why. <sighs> Finia just kind of like looks her head down, hoping to hear a different answer. Cisne just looks. That's not unfair. But what would you do if someone else has tried to decide to strike the king in your presence would you stop them or allow it to happen are you implying that i should be expecting such we're not implying anything we're just seeing where you're I would like to insight check both of them. Sure. Do I need to roll individually? No, just roll one. God. That's only a 12. 
The only thing you could assume is they got plans for tomorrow. Where are they going for that? You can only guess as they just look at you. We just want to know. Will you not harm the king? Or will you go as far as to protect him if you're in his presence? There is a difference. Choosing not to strike somebody and protecting somebody is where we're trying to figure out the difference here. to be tomorrow the event that we are speaking of is best taken tomorrow many of us will be present and very rarely are weapons allowed in his presence there is no better time to do this than tomorrow Hey, Draco, what you doing, bud? <laughs> hey, wiggly butts. What are you doing? <clears throat> I guess that would... Depend on what you plan on doing when the king is not a fool. I'm sure he has plenty of in his guard to protect himself and his queen. I'm sure much has changed since I was last here. They kind of like look at each other confused. Much has changed. But don't be a fool. The king is not the one with the power. As they just look at you, but just don't interfere. But don't be so naive that you need to keep your guard down for tomorrow. Do you really take me for a fool? No. But we are all entering into the lion's den tomorrow, even if we're invited to eat with him. Nonetheless, predators still are there. Whether they're being silver or not, whether they're being civil or not, they all would want nothing more than to prove their title over us, no matter which embarrassing ways they might be. I guess let me ask you this. What is your goal with tomorrow? What do you hope to accomplish as a result of what you plan? Peace? A new leader? New laws? I guess I'm just trying to wrap my head around why specifically now I've been gone for 18 years. I am still learning what has and has not changed. Cessna just immediately mentions... This isn't anything new for me. Ever since I left the King's Guard, I made my mission to get that child off the throne. I tried to do it when I was the guard, but in obviously a more civil way. That didn't work. I lost my title. 
So with my Emerald Enclave, I decide to go on further from that. But without the title of Captain of the Guard, it left me in a difficult situation. Now, Finia is willing to help, and if anything, she's insistent on it. The only piece I've been missing is the ability to get in freely and not have suspicions raised in my presence. If you don't want to help, that's no problem. As they just look past you, they just move past. But we do not expect you to interfere. As they both put a hand on your shoulder. We appreciate everything you've done. We congratulate you for what you, your, for everything you're going to get. Don't stop us tomorrow. As they start walking off. <clears throat> Anything from the group? Just have your full mouth full jammed up with pineapple. This is really good <laughs> pineapple. Um, I mean, unless we hear something from him over psychic whispers, we have no commentary on that. So, oh, oh, uh, wait, is someone with us? Mm-hmm. Yeah, what, some, what's someone, watch, watch out for this. It's real sugary. Oh, oh. Good. you know. I don't want to keep touching things with these blue hands. I'm going to go take oh, a oh. Sh shower uh, and get like cleaned up as he goes over by Sophania. Care to join me? Do we hear that? <laughs> just, just the sound of that. That was funny. <laughs> if we hear that, I spit pineapple <laughs> all <laughs> across the Z, table. Z, you're muted. I said that's the sound of my wings going. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, she follows up. <laughs> okay. Alright, so they, they, they head out to go I'll meet you guys back for dinner. Go Bye. go get clean right, then we'll get see you there. Go get clean, oh. then go get dirty, then go get clean again. <laughs> I, um, pick up pieces of half-eaten pineapple before anyone can notice on the table. Do, do we cover if he's coming tomorrow? Uh, I mean, everybody gets a plus one. Yeah, but yep. he's really wanted. <laughs> this is what I was about to say. <laughs> oh... Um, Soma is... is... We're one thing, but... He's got... A bounty in a lot of places, including here. Are we sure it's a good idea if we... Have him come? I mean... I don't think we talked about it yet, but... I'm sure he's... No. He's aware. Perhaps... Perhaps tomorrow, before we pick up our outfits, we should reach to the law offices, take the remaining doppelganger to clear our names, which would in turn clear his I mean, was his bounty associated with us? Like, I feel like it may be easier to no, show the heads. No, but I'm sure we could and... probably spin some sort of tail that would include... Do we really need to, though? Or, I mean, <laughs> he don't always have to look like him, He right? He, he can change what he looks like. Regardless, I'm sure it's the thing. Cut off at the end. Regardless, what'd you say after that? Are you sure Zephinia what? Oh, I, I said regardless, Zephinia would probably appreciate that. Yeah. I'm not going to lie before she gallivanted off with him to go take it in the shower. I uh, was going to ask her. Well, you can um, still ask her. I am not. 
you just, I am not asking her right now. <laughs> Maybe already walked in on too many people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't mean right now. I mean like a dinner or something. We're still gonna have dinner together tonight. We hash all this out then. I mean, if he okay, if if he if he comes, then uh, maybe I'll we could pull her aside. If he doesn't come, then well, we could ask him if he thinks it's a good idea. I mean, he ain't he ain't stupid. He knows there's people looking for me. Knows it's like likely to cause trouble if he shows up. You know, his attention span is fixed on one thing right now. Well. Speaking of dinner, um, I'm I'm actually I think going to head back and see if I can't help set things up. Are you sure? Uh, yeah, just I'll see you guys in a bit. And Hades is just gonna I'm gonna walk off kind of towards Skyju's home. Okay, got it. Anybody? Yeah, right. He's uh, well. He... <sighs> It's complicated. Ain't everything. That's the truth. Um, well... How's, how's got you doing over there? And I can look over. over. <laughs> you look over. Um, before they really, like, look over and stuff, and he's kind of just sitting there for a moment while the, um, the two are leaving, I would like to burn, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna burn one of my wild shape, mm -hmm. um, abilities to instead cast Find Familiar. Okay. Um, I'm going to conjure up a small but very elegant white raven um and I'm going to send it after um Cisne and Ophelia with the intention of following at a distance okay do you have stats for the bird to make a stealth check I will pull it up right now okay <laughs> Okay. Uh, what do you need from me? Stuff. Uh, what modifier is stealth? Dex. Dex. Okay. Just like in Star Wars, I need this bird to fly casually. <sighs> okay. Nineteen. Nice. Okay. It does not do anything to grab anybody's attention to think that it's not just any old random bird that's just flying around. It's staying, okay. staying with Cisne and Finia. Okay. And it's probably like way up in the sky, just um... Given a bird's eye view? Bird's eye view, keeping it casual, um... I don't want it to be alerting them, just more of watching where they're going, who they're talking to, um, more or less just that. Um, okay. back in the inn, um, Geiju's just gonna, yeah, um, I'm gonna quietly get up, um, and approach the remaining people, I suppose, which would be Dahlia and Dira, because Hades has also walked off. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, maybe I should have been less trustworthy. What, what do you mean? He's gonna speak very quietly um i'm not going to use uh psychic whispers right now because i don't want to alert everyone else or get them worried because they're clearly off doing other things mm -hmm. 
Um, so instead, I'll, I'll whisper to the two of them. Cisne and Philia might be planning something during the gala involving the king. Maybe they're asked for my help, or to stay out of it. What did you say? I said nothing. Only to understand. Did they give you any explanation? Not particularly. I'm gonna look around the room and be like, maybe we should discuss this. I think it's time to go home to dinner. At home, yes. Agreed. Just in case. Let's go. Okay. As you all start heading back, Hades, you you do go to the house, right? Okay. As you get inside, you are immediately introduced to a large portrait that is put directly like face first as the first thing you see as you enter into the actual house itself. They even decide to buy like lights so it actually kind of like aims towards it, like canopy lights, and they got this intricate frame and it's it's the main take it with what you will, but it is the main focal point. The whole house. No matter what room you're in, you see this thing stand out. Uh, yeah, he's just like, oh, that's uh, quite the uh, <laughs> the centerpiece, if you will. <laughs> it, uh, it really ties the room together. <laughs> oh, oh, welcome, welcome back. Is the rest of the group with you? I I believe they'll be shortly behind. Oh. I I got a little bit of a head start. Sorry, he really comes around. He puts his arm around your shoulders. He's looking at. Isn't it a beautiful piece of artwork? What do you think? It, uh, it leaves me speechless. Oh, me too. It's just, oh, it just takes my breath away. Ah, uh, come, you can help us uh, set up for set up uh, all the plates and silver. Sounds good. Uh, sounds good. I am. I'd be happy to help. <laughs> um, at, at at this point, you see um, Macana uh, out there helping out set up everything. Um, as the current smell right now uh, smells similar to what it was uh, in the morning, uh, similar meats, uh, but it looks like they got like roasted potatoes, like cold potatoes that they're doing, and then um, like some local like beans that they got. <clears throat> but the one thing that grabs your attention added to this as you leave out of the vicinity of the artwork is you think that it's not going to get any more embarrassing for like god you after that but then you just see like this giant like celebratory banner hanging over the kitchen that says congratulations uh, i want to help with it um <laughs> let's see what do i got what can i do to help um hey draco come <laughs> Why are you under my desk? Hi. D and D pupper. <laughs> I got I got nothing good to help with this right now. Um, but he's gonna just be like, oh, uh, that is that is fantastic. Um, let me uh, let me see if I can if I can do anything. For do you this. think do you and, think you uh, like it? Oh, yeah, he's going to love oh, it. Perfect, perfect. I will. Uh, I'm gonna like see if I can find just like brightly colored. Like, do you have any uh, scarves or anything very brightly colored? Uh, yeah, uh, Zarbier, why don't you go upstairs and, and go get some from my room? Oh, actually, yeah, yeah, and it goes up there, and, uh, which, which drawer? Well, no matter which one, it's, it's perfectly fine. It really runs up there and kind of pulls down some more unmentionable kind of scarves and brings downstairs. All right, I got some scarves. And then tie them from the bed first. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, if I hear that, I'm just in my head. I'm like, even better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and use Mage Hand to tie those to the banner. <laughs> okay. So I don't have to touch them. Um, 
Uh, yeah, so we'll tie those like so they're hanging from the banner, so it's even more like obvious. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, perfect. That really brings it brings it all together. I, I do you think we should mention to him where you got them from? No, no. I think you should leave them. Don't mention anything. And, and okay. in fact, I think you should uh, make it a point to have him take the banner down later to to store and keep with him. We can put it on our ship. It'll be fantastic. Oh, I didn't think about that. Oh, oh, no wonder you're the smarter one of the group. That that makes sense. Yeah. Yes, he can put it right in his captain's quarter. So love it. <laughs> oh, and then they can both see it. Oh, that's great. That's It'll great. be the yeah. last thing he sees when he goes to sleep, and the first thing he'll see when he wakes up. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. About this time is when you all like start walking into the front door, immediately seeing this large piece of artwork that goes on a wall that should not fit this large piece of artwork. Like it the sense of ceiling's not that high, this large piece is like almost like <laughs> the size of the wall. <laughs> <laughs> the art piece or yeah. the congratulations. The art piece. You got the congratulations in the kitchen. You guys like going through the living room right now. <laughs> Oh, it's your last bit cut off there. It's in the living room. The congratulations is in the kitchen. Wow, that certainly is. I think it's (laughs) unique. And big, real big. Mm hmm. What do you think? Got your other crush? It's certainly something. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. It means they're real proud of. Oh, but but come in the kitchen. There's so much more better. Like, there's so much more to the celebration. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. you need help in the kitchen. I head straight in there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Come, come in. We could all use some help. Help out uh, your friend set up the dishes. I'll follow dear in. <laughs> As you do see the banner with what looks like scarves tied to the ends. Well, that's bright. <laughs> Those scarves look interesting. Sweet. I don't know they're, the, they're the brightest ones they had. When Gaiju walks in, I just... Thaumaturgy fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> just sparklers. Just sparklers, yeah. <laughs> All right, where do you need help? Uh, this is certainly something. Well, it, every, it, if you want to grab some silverware, some napkins, set up everything, we're almost there. As they are like reheating some of the extra meat from the morning and finish up I the potatoes. I do that. Gra- grab up utensils and stuff. Now, see, this is this is a real homey celebration. This is going to be more fun than anything else. Do. And I go and set the table. I nudge Kaiju. And congrats, like, like glancing at the side and then go to help. In, um, <laughs> I'll wait. Real quick, too, I forget. I psychic whispers Zephinia, um, so everyone else hears it too, but I'm just like, there's a big celebration at the guy. Joe across his house, please don't be late. We'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, share some point. Okay. All right. As food is placed on a table, everybody stands around as the family gets together and this is a momentous occasion. Not only were we able to see you win at the King's Tourney, but pretty soon you'll, well, not have such a weight on your shoulder. You won't have to worry about coming back home and hiding and it's, it's quite a, quite a, big deal and I I hope now after tomorrow 
that you will not have this bounty on your head and on your shoulders that uh, you'll be able to come back to Nelothir more often, come see your family more often, and we can do more momentous occasions like this. More artwork and more celebrations and more dinners and festivals and just more everything. I look forward to it. Well, everyone sit down. Eat, eat. It's going to get cold. Don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> I psychic whisper Sophia. It's gonna get cold. <laughs> and I'm like turning the corner to come into the house. <laughs> okay. All right. Hell what? <laughs> as you immediately come in, like you're immediately rushing in, as you immediately stop to see the portrait, whether or not that slows you down or you keep going past it, it's completely up to you. Oh, I stop for just one moment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Don't say anything about it. And then <laughs> head over to the kitchen. Just just a weird side thing. Has anybody here seen Big Bang Theory? The mm -hmm. show? Okay, so is... if you guys know what I'm talking oh. about with the big the, the big portrait of them together that's like put behind the TV for Penny and uh yes. yeah. <laughs> uh <clears throat> Okay, so yes, you join in. Uh food to be had. Anything for the night as you guys eat for dinner? Do his parents get up and leave at any point? After dinner, I'm assuming done, Selma start... didn't come with Zephinia. No. Uh, the, uh, they mostly start cleaning plates as food is done, but nothing else. I'm going to use Psychic Whispers. Um,. Mm, it's been six hours probably by this time, so I'll, I'll recast it just in case. Okay. Or, yeah. Um, so are we going to talk about the thing tomorrow? That look at Kaiju. I don't know. Maybe we need to fill in certain people and figure out what our escape plan is. Uh, Zephinia and Hades, you were already gone by the time I was done speaking with Cisne and uh, Finia. It seems that they have some plans for tomorrow's gala. And have either asked that I help, or I do not interfere. Well, you shouldn't interfere. Depends on what. That depends on what the plan is. From what it oh, sounds yes. like, two birds, one stone. Seems like they were telling. You're off free. You don't have to worry about them. I just worry that if I don't do anything, that I may still get dragged into it. Just, just for clarification's sake, are we talking about the planning to off the king and the queen? It's possible. I don't know, they didn't give me specifics, despite me asking exactly what their plan was or what their goals were. They ain't telling you, Reese. I think they know they can't trust me. I mean... Well, if they, if they can't trust you, then why'd they tell you about it in the first place? Because they were hoping that I would say yes. Thinia is rather adamant on killing the king. She wasn't too thrilled that he wanted me to originally kill her at the tournament today. And when she was leaving, she told me to think about it. I told her tonight that 
after spending 18 years already, have been on the run for being accused of killing the last one, I was not going to participate in the murder of another. I think that's her reason, just because, I mean, I'd be mad too. The Gallic here line is not the best for Nelithir. There have been other kings and queens that have ruled this kingdom far better than they have, but... But we don't know if it's the king and the queen, or just the king. And what happens if they do? Someone gets blamed for another murder. And a new line will be elected. Elected? As far as I know, Juvenia has no heir to the throne. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I have not heard of any. So who would pick the new ruler? The Nelitharian Council. I think she's for them? Did that seem like a bitch? I don't know. They may for a second here. Um, who, who? I guess we must ask the question: Is who would, who would benefit the most from this scenario of both of them, or just one of them? Well, that is the follow-up question: As if one of them was gone, would Juvenile then take over as standing monarch or ruler? Um, remind me, Joe, is it just paternal, or, um, patriarchal for Delathir? Or can a queen be the lead monarch? There hasn't been a specific... Uh, the, uh... There is no specific rule, but there has just always been a tradition that the king has always been put into, and then, then the queen marries in. And what happens if the king dies? What happens? I think the queen would stand to gain much more. She wants to rule as herself. Bring in somebody Damn. else, or oh, that makes my head hurt. And would it would cease to seem that from the events of the tournament, that she is in a position that wants to have power, but seems to be repressed by the king at this point, and he's not really doing what she wants. So, it would lend to the belief that maybe she could be behind that. I just don't think, unless we know what their plan is, what what the plan is for, what it's all about, who's supposed to be taking over. We don't. I mean, you say this line ain't been the best, but we don't know what's planning to come after. What's the worst thing if we did nothing? We keep you in the line of sight of everybody. You have alibis. Nobody can blame you for this. Not necessarily, because if the king dies, the pardon goes away, and the queen could then do what she wants and kill Gaiju and the rest of us and get rid of the witnesses and say that it was an uprising. And it ain't just about that. I mean, that's a big. They want to. They want to assassinate a king. That's. Hey. We're talking talking about it like he's just. A piece on a board. He's a person. I would stop that. This feels like a trap. You, you just got your pardon. You just fought for it. And what's to stop them from placing the blame on you? 
because you didn't actively help out. You are an easy target. You're going to be present and you have a supposed history of killing kings and if someone falls, it's very easy to point a finger at you, Kaju Garkash. I know. Jew? Gaju, if I may here, you, you know the king better than anybody before, correct? Yes. Perhaps, because we do have that protected for the next day and a half, though, it might not be a terrible idea for you to speak with I think it's worth trying. And, and perhaps not maybe about this, but just to see where he is, where his head's at, what kind of ruler he has become, and if he's still the man. <clears throat> they asked you to help. They asked you to stand aside. Ain't nothing says you have to do that. What? You don't owe them? They ain't giving you a reason. We don't know who's behind it either. If we talk to the wrong person... Do we know for certain that this is the king that their target is? I don't know. But... It could be a council member, but even then that doesn't quite make sense. It wouldn't make sense for the queen, because a new queen can always be established if absolutely necessary. I... It makes most sense that Juven would be the target. By telling you this, they either want to wait on it and your assistance, or they want you as an accomplice in their trap. But I'm not sure how to feel about that. Yeah. So, I guess... <laughs> what do you think I should do? like you not to get involved but like Haiti said it can go badly and that's not something I would want for you so maybe like he said try and talk to him but if you do you should not go alone Perhaps tomorrow morning, then. I will go with you. And then anyone else. You should ever be alone until this whole thing is done. Agreed. <gasps> Not with any of these plotting people. Royalty and cancels and what else they've already used you as a scapegoat once they cannot do it again whether they have honest intentions this time or not if they had those honest intentions they'd tell them what was going on that's true king seems like a piece of shit but we gotta protect ourselves first him and the queen do. Yeah, they look like assholes. We don't know what other piece of shit is waiting to take over. If I had the best of my money, it was probably the queen. Do 
you think a private audience like... is possible? She don't seem like somebody who should be ruling anything. I guess only time will tell. We could always just leave. Let them figure it out. But then we wouldn't have your pardon. Could we get your pardon and leave? I think I have to be there at the gala to get it. Give me a few minutes. Um, I need to do something, but I won't be able to hear you talking if I do. If that's alright. <clears throat> um, I'm just gonna kind of go into my familiar's eyes and senses and see what's going on. Okay. Uh, currently, right now, it looks like your familiar is over some woods. You can still see a little bit occasionally of the two of them as like maybe some there's a part in some of the branches of trees. Um, it looks like they're at some kind of camp, roughly about two miles within the woods of Nelithir. It'll just keep watching them. Okay. Um, and I'll go back to my senses. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we should get some rest for the night. It's been a long day. I hear that. What did you just do? After Cisne left, I sent a familiar to keep an eye on her. Oh, I want to know who she's talking to. What she does. Has, has it picked up anything? Information? Currently, she and Finia are at a camp outside of town. That's all I know. all we can do is hope for the best but prepare for the worst tomorrow maybe we should oh, plan to go there early maybe we can get there early enough and I don't know, talk to the king or something I think that would be a good plan I think you gotta try alright Um, I'm going to quietly dismiss myself from the table and okay. just head to my room. Got it. Anybody else? I'll excuse myself from not too long after. Everyone else? Um, I'm going to just chit-chat with the parents until it's reasonable bedtime and we're probably getting pretty close to that and make sure yeah. I get a good night's sleep. Okay. I'm gonna tune the moon sickles. Got it. And then get some sleep. Okay, Hades. He'll kind of wait for everybody to like head to bed, and then he will uh, help. He's gonna just help clean up while everybody's talking. Not okay. Head to bed, then he'll uh, he'll head to bed. Okay. All right. Then uh, got you. You head to the room first. Mm -hmm. Before anybody else meets up with you there, is there anything you want to do while you're in your privacy? Um. It's actually been a while. Um, I would like to pray to Alasna. 
Okay. I'm sorry for my silence. I've been a bit tied up in life, and it's kept me from informing you and seeking your guidance, but I could use it now. In this scenario, I'll allow you to give me a religion check with advantage. Would be a nineteen. Okay. Oh god, that thing creeped up on me. God damn. Uh, <clears throat> With your eyes closed, you can start to feel the familiar heat overcoming your skin of her arrival. The floor beneath you less hard than before you positioned, as you can tell you're being shifted to a different plane. The heat itself calms, but you're not really sent to anywhere with an illustrated look. It's mostly a flat plane of nothingness. Maybe some rocks, some green, but it just looks like a random plane of bare wasteland. As you see her there, standing in front of you, armor on, no wings summoned, as she just looks at you. She puts her hands on your shoulders. <sighs> Much turmoil is within you. That is apparent. Rise. Let's understand what is going on. I've been working to clear my name in Althea so that I can focus on everything else and make sure that the people in my life are safe. Trust me, I've seen the battles. The tournament was quite large. I can't believe a single god has not seen what has transpired. It's quite a festivity that has taken place. I believe congratulations are in order. But. Maybe. You got your pardon. What is the problem? Did I? <sighs> Hate to say, I am not I the god not. to answer the hearts of man. I cannot tell you if they're lying or not. I do not have my pardon yet in my hands, and therefore it is just as easy to pull away as a worm on a string dangled before a fish in the water. I am so close, and one wrong move can pull that away. It seems that tomorrow something is going to happen during the gala. And I may fall victim again to another trick. And I don't know if I can stand by and let it happen. And what do you believe will happen? I think there will be an attempt on Juvenile's life. I don't know exactly by who, or for what reason. Not to quote fates, but if the king is to die, that is their path. No need to interrupt it. And what of mine? This event, many people will be attending. 
Honey, the eyes can be deceived. <sighs> I'm a god, but I have limitations. Destruction. Resurrection. What would you have me do in this case? What would you ask of me? Allow me an opportunity to speak with Juven one on one. No guards, no weapons. Just us. She steps back, ponders your request, and she summons what looks like a satchel on her side, pulls out a book. If this man truly served, as you do, <coughs> excuse me, that's oh, so dry down here. <clears throat> As you truly served as you do, this is a request I could possibly honor, but I do not see his prayers to me. I do not see his connection. I can try to attempt to the one that he serves, or at least the one that his men serve. But this is a request. This is a favor. This is a quite a large one indeed. And I, I feel obligated to help you. I would need something in return. Nothing large, mind you, but this is a larger quest in and of itself. Oh, um, there is a relic that should be in their possession, an item that has been stolen many fathers before him. A relic of more importance. Than power, title alone. There is a how should I phrase this? Generations before him. Many things were stolen from other kingdoms. There was a ring in his possession. Black with a diamond head. As far as I know, he has never used it, nor has his father before him. It sits merely in a trophy room, collecting dust. But if one would be smart enough to use it. If someone would be wise enough to understand its properties, Nelithera could gain a power that could tip it in their favor. The war. I just want that piece removed from the puzzle. A certain pawn taken off the chessboard, if you will. If you can promise me that you can, you or one of your companions can at least retrieve the ring when you were there, 
remove it from the kingdom itself. Then this favor will be an even trade. But that is for tomorrow. If you can promise me you can do that while you're there, I will take care of your request now. I don't think that I can do that request. My sister was recently there and she, she has a worse bounty than I did. If I'm caught sneaking around, it'll just do this all over again. I'm sorry. Do not be sorry. It was a fear for a favor. I'm sorry to have wasted your time. I'll figure it out on my own. She looks at you. She puts her hand on your shoulder. Now wait. There are other ways to help you out in such an issue. I cannot contact this king for you without knowing his patron so easily. But perhaps we both know of somebody that could at least give you a bit of insight without communication. I won't be able to tell you exactly what happened, but maybe ease your mind. It's all right. Very well. Well then, I hope tomorrow's festivities do not strain on you as hard as they are now. I hope that everything works out as you hope. And I wish for you to gain what you want and get what you deserve. If for some reason you take to the hills due to what you believe to be true, I can at least bar their path from you. least I can do the help that you came for I cannot give at least not so easily but I can cast a bit of magic to at least slow them down if needed rest take your mind off of it tomorrow will be a new day and if all I can see is true you'll get what you want all you need to do is stomach down some politics, enjoy some good wine, have some good food, and put on an act that you actually like being there. If all goes well, that'll be the worst parts of it. I've done many my own time. As embers start going around her and start going around you, Tomorrow, I'll keep my eye on you. If for some reason trouble happens and you're outside the castle, call upon me and I can at least 
farther path. But I warn you, I cannot help you when you're inside their walls. Right. <clears throat> Embers start flaring up as she disappears and you're into the blankness where you can feel the floor beneath you again. I'd say at this point, Dalla, you enter the room. If I see he's praying, then I will quietly shut the door and just sit on the bed till he's okay. back. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, you're, you're here already. <sighs> Sorry, just hoped for some guidance. I take it you were talking to Alasna? <clears throat> what did she while, say? She could have done me a favor in exchange for another favor. <clears throat> but I declined out of fear. So, for the most part, what happens next will be a decision of my own. That she may be able to lend some assistance in the absolute worst case that something happens tomorrow. Do you have a plan yet? Not yet. I, just... I figure it's something I can keep thinking about while you all are asleep. And we can go over it in the morning. We can. But promise me one thing. What's that? Don't speak to Juvenile alone. I mean, it's certainly going to depend on the situation. The less people around you, the less of an alibi you have, the more easier it is for someone to pull something on you. I know. We're walking if into... If the wrong person is around, then it won't matter. We are walking into a lion's den. And there are people here that are willing to do a lot of things to get their way and throw others underneath them. I do not want that to be you again. Yeah. Let us be there. Do you promise me? I promise that I will that I will try not to speak to him alone. But if I'm being honest, I would prefer it. I know you would. But we can't let something happen to you again. I know. There is so much at stake. You just got your part in, we're so close. And any opportunity to get you alone with anybody. Someone could use that to their advantage. I just don't want you to get hurt. I want us to see your family. To be able to visit again. I 
and I don't know what they're planning, but it feels like to me that whatever it is, you're a part of it, whether you want to be or not. That's what I'm afraid of. <clears throat> Did Olasna give you any advice other than asking for a favor? Not particularly. She could help as long as we're out of the castle, but that's about it. If something happens, then that's where we'll go. We'll get through this. And she'll give him a kiss before she starts getting ready for bed. Okay. He's just gonna go to bed. Okay. For now. Everybody goes to bed. Okay. While you all sleep, there are two people I need to approach. We're going to start off with Dahlia. In the middle of your dreams, you wake up in the middle. You know you're dreaming. You know you are asleep. But yet you are in a communication with somebody else. This is not a future thing. This is not a foresight. Someone's communicating to you. <clears throat> As you stand, you're in a large black room. Not void of anything. There's just no lights. As you hear footprints or footsteps coming in front of you, loud, I'm not trying to be quiet at all. Torches start to activate. You find yourself in a grand hall of familiarity. As you just see, Deimos just standing there, suit on in his humanoid form. I say nothing to him. You start walking. Smirks as he comes. I try to decline cross. the call. You try to what? I try to decline the call. Oh, he just walks around you, just looking at you. Fuck away. I'm glad to see that even through some of the blades, you have survived. But to waste my magic. An immortal of that quality. Does not matter though. It's not your magic. It's mine too. Believe what you want. You are still my kin. And your power will always come from me. Whether you want to admit it or not. I gave you a choice, but I watched, saw through your eyes, saw through the interactions you've had in the past several days. I would not want to put weight on your shoulders to pick one yourself, so I've chosen a companion of yours to press the pain. Choosing up. anything. Do not worry. This is not one that you have favor for. I'm not making any decisions. You never did this with any concern. There was no trade. There was no agreement. Where do you think your power comes from when you're in that form? Do you think it just stays its own way when you take upon my lineage you think it's the same as it was before it's my blood too and it will be what I make of it not yours 
it's mine, and I will choose to use it how I want to. As he starts walking into the shadows, you start to see his body get taller. Horns get more elongated. They just see his his body just turn around out of the shadows, just slam on the table. Who do you think you were talking to? I was the first to make deals like these. Just because you are my kin does not make you any different. It does not make you special. It does not make you an exception to the rule. Whether or not you said the words, the action was done. You knew what happened when Silic did it. I didn't realize that I wouldn't get any say in my ability whatsoever. We may be kin, but I am not your slave. He stands upright, just looks at you. Very well. If you are not my kin, those words, that phrase you say, remember it well. For the time that you need it the most, I will not allow you to use it. But you did use it nonetheless. Just know that every time, even as few times as you use that form, it has to come from somewhere. That power. Just because you didn't understand does not mean that you did not do it. The action has been done. I will not take from your friends. They are secure. Their fates are as they are. And trust me, their roles are much too large for me to influence. Think of this as a favor I took from someone else. One that you see no affection for. One that you have no admiration or respect. So thus you should not care. But to me, the value of this is greater than all. You want freedom from any kind of servitude to the line? Very well. What I gain from this deal is much greater. And what is that? A man's fate forever changed. The scales are balanced. Just know, when you need me, I expect you to be on your knees for when you need it. Until then, do not expect my lineage's help. And when you need me, I won't be there. Very well. As he just lifts up this golden cord that you did not see before that attaches your soul to his. As he starts dragging his sharp nail across it. Just takes his two blades of his fingers and just snaps it cut. Do you feel something of a void in your heart for a second? Tethers cut. Farewell. As your eyes start to close forcefully, Dira, 
throughout your sleep, you go through a constant vision back and forth. You are seen through the eyes of someone, whether it's you, whether it's someone else, you're unsure. But whoever it is is holding the blade that you just saw recently. Blade made out of gold and glass. <clears throat> you find yourself bloodied, fighting off against a wave of some kind of creatures that you do not recognize. You cross a large bridge in the void of just nothingness until you get to this large circular pedestal. No lights except for what's inside the nine points of the pedestal, each glowing with a different hue, each resembling a different shape. As you crawl in pain towards the center, you find yourself a similar column in the center. As you see all this energy generating into that one spot, as you look at the blade, as you just shove it right into the center as it generates all the energy of all of them put together as they all just form right into this blade. Fire strikes, lightning, ice, wind, somehow balance becomes fluctuate in the area. Death and life becomes inconsequential. Somehow this blade has control over all of them. As you look up in the sky, you see a large dragon merely strike down almost as a threatened by the blade. And it immediately puts his palm down to try to strike you. You wake up from your dream. And that's where we're going to end it. <laughs> this was going to be a fun shopping episode, you guys. Dude, what the fuck got our, our fun shopping shirts on? <laughs> fun shopping like, shirts no, on? Fun shopping shirts. I'm going to add the stress. <laughs> We had our fun shopping episode. Now we now get back, back to it. Feels trip. Yep. <laughs> it was nice being happy for a while. <laughs> so, uh, was happy. Do not forget <laughs> that. Unheard of. Next week we will not have a blade session. So blades will be off next week, but we will still have echoes next week. We do have Star Wars tomorrow and echoes Thursday this week. But uh, just so you know, for scheduling, you will not see a sequel to this episode for two weeks. So uh, check us out then. Well, the team has to simmer on this information. Um, but I'm sure I'll be grilled just at wait. T2E2. Next uh, week, and we see you in person. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You can't uh, run from us now. <laughs> I can run fast. I can run hard. Uh, the, uh... <clears throat> now with those wings on, you uh, can't. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, fucking wings. Why can't they make me fly? Uh, the, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, so do not forget uh, Star Wars tomorrow, Echoes Thursday. Um, do not forget that if you miss this episode or you need to check up on what you missed, um, VODs here on Twitch, and if they've expired, you can check us out on YouTube and Kick. Uh, do not forget then two weekends will be at C22. So if you're a Chicago fan or you love cosplay or if both and you go to C22, come find us or check us out on socials. We'll keep up to date of where we're going to be located. That being said, everybody have a fantastic night and we'll see you tomorrow for Star Wars. Good night.